Welcome back, everybody, to Gfinity Spring 2. It's time for our last series of day number one to find out who's going to the top eight. We have Life Coach versus Tang, and we have Caldi and Lothar, who is just uh, spending some time casting slash taking a break. How are you guys doing? Yeah, great. That last two years, man. It was hilarious. Really fun. Hilarious. It was so funny, dude. I, we, were, we were dying. <laughs> as soon as it happened, we were like, no, he's going to win. He's like, ah. So... Yeah, we were we were all happy to see one guy super happy and another guy heartbroken. That's what it's about, man. It's the story. That's mean. That's it's the mean. It's not necessarily the cards that are being played. It's the stories behind it that makes me personally have a it's, lot of fun. Uh, what I said on stream, it's funny that the most entertaining matches are those decided by the RNG and by misplays of the uh, of the right. players, right? Small things they could have done better too. Yeah. But and it, it ends up becoming this thing where like. <clears throat> Even though it's, it has its ups and downs, it's all about the finish of it. And then it comes down to this, like, one point of damage that <laughs> maybe Ro could have found the way out. Yeah. And, of course, the whole dramatic, like, he was up 2-0, then lost three games up. So, Far tough for Farmer, but he'll be playing Airbrush on the Challenger stage, and we'll update you. Uh, in the meantime, Kali, how you been hanging? Uh, I'm good. I actually practiced already a lot, and it's surprisingly how many of the yeah. practice games actually turn out exactly like that, you know. But, yeah. Uh, with Knife RG, juggler yeah. with a defender of Argus <laughs> on a sea giant. There's been crazy stuff like, you know, Blinktron into Gora Howl into Fireball for 13, exactly. So stuff, like crazy stuff happening all the time against RDU. Yeah. Definitely goes, it becomes so tense, I suppose, when there's like that one out and you get it. And, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, well, uh, for guys, if you know, a game like Hearthstone, it's better to be lucky and good. That's the, yeah, that's, that's the true. key. That's the key to success in anything. In this scenario, Life Coach versus Tang. Uh, this is a matchup we haven't seen yet throughout the entire day. It's a matchup between a Korean player that people don't know much about, but what they've seen from so far on stream, not the most impressive performance. That's he's going to have to pick it up against a player who technically stands above the rest. Life Coach is a player known for his incredible play-making decisions, and uh, maybe not necessarily the most timely of all players in terms of making you feel compelled to watch all of his games. But I, I, I personally enjoyed it a lot because I learned something new every time he does True. a creative play. Yeah. I actually heard from a friend uh, about the Tang versus Panima series that happened to the second stage here. Oh, yeah, that, what happened? Uh, Tang played really well in that one, way better. Just a different person than against, uh, uh, than, yeah, against Reynard. Reynard. So mm -hmm. it's, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. I mean, it was the first match on stage and he was... Arguably, probably a bit nervous. It'll be interesting to see how this uh, goes now into the second match on stage here. Sure. I, I look forward to it, too. More importantly, because I think guys like Tang deserve a second chance of redemption. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very... It's just so unceremonious to go into a tournament like this, get some pretty good exposure, you know, tens of thousands of people watching you, and then... Uh, you know, lose Play your first match. Master. Yeah, lose your first <laughs> match. You know, make some pretty bad plays. Give up a game or maybe even the series, and then lose off stream and be eliminated. Yeah, that's, that's the, that's the that's lasting worse. impression you give. Yeah, this is an opportunity to not only make an impression, but against one of the best players out there, and also steal his go-to game reports. Oh, Robin that's them. that's important for you, right? You're like always pointing out the I mean, that's, gamers. That's, that's, <laughs> it's part of the prestige, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. And there's not many Korean players who stand out compared to their peers. We have Rini Hour and Kranich, who did to go to BlizzCon. Masan is a notable yeah. one. He won Pinnacle 3, I believe. And uh, outside of that, uh, we don't really know too many Korean players. I mean, if you dig really deep into the hardcore underground, you might hear players like Transit, uh, Surrender, those guys who also did other tournaments. But it's like, who really is notable from Korea at the moment who's currently not retired due to mistaken identity I have identity no idea. Issues. Yeah, it's exactly. no only idea. the Koreans that are on Western teams, I suppose, yeah, with uh, Kranich and Rainy out there. Yeah. Right. I guess uh, that leaves Tang, so maybe he can do it against Life Coach. Now, take a look at the lineups. We have Life Coach playing what you were calling basically a full ramp lineup. You had Paladin, Druid, and uh, Handlock, right? Double That's big guns. About. Double big game hunter, super greed, I guess anti-greed. But yeah. as a result, being greedy himself oh, yeah. compared to how much aggro is out there. Uh, and then True. we have Tang playing Paladin, his uh, Mech Mage. And I didn't get to see... Or not his... Uh, yeah, his Mech Mage. And what was the last deck? I didn't get to see it because it was off stream. Paladin, Mech Mage, and... I don't think you played the third deck. I think you lost the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Right, But then he won off stream. Did you hear about his third deck? No, no, sorry. I, I didn't, didn't hear about it. But I can okay. ch uh, check the classes. Okay, well, he has that one class that's interesting. So Mech Mage is the one that... 
will have to be... Uh, Druid. Oh, it's Druid. Okay. That lineup is actually quite decent, you know, because both Mechmates and Druid are good against Ram decks. And with him having three Ram decks, I could, I could easily see those two being easy wins, but I think the Paladin might run into trouble. Maybe if he can face it against, you know, the Druid, I suppose, but Life Coach is very good against Paladins, I suppose, yeah, as well. Mm -hmm. Comes down to the nourish and innovates that he gets. Yeah, that's true. When when you have a Druid Mirror also, and you have one more card to ramp to, it's a big right. difference in the mirror. You hit the Emperor, you get yeah. the Innervate Wild Growths, and you're just so far ahead in the tempo. Or you can even play Nourish on turn 5, Emperor on turn 6. You basically have two Innervates for free just for the, from, from the Nourish. Yeah, exactly. Really interesting dynamic of how it pans out. And Life Coach is a guy that I pegged to be the favorite of this group. It would be a little, it would be surprising to say the least to see him eliminated here in the round of 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very true. It would be. It would be. So uh, make sure you guys are engaged. Uh, we haven't actually t called out too much, but you know, you want to definitely tweet at Gfinity and let them know that you, you like what's going on or some of your predictions that will be happening. Uh, more importantly, that maybe Tang needs somebody to root for him. Many, many people probably don't believe in him, but. I, I'm going to go ahead and predict Tang to just take this one because I think I think people want the qualified players the to have a story. Yeah, yeah, the underdogs. People, it's cool to see Life Coach, you know, Ray Nat, Firebat, all these guys, RDU. We've seen those guys. We know that they can win tournaments or tournament uh, for some of those guys. <laughs> but what about these open players? We want to see their stories too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, seeing players like Hoy for recently, you know, winning uh, the Wild Game Cup, it's always th those stories, you know, see the underdogs come through. Yeah, sounds, sounds really good. I, I think yeah, I think this would be the match for, uh, for the Koreans now, really to redeem themselves, I'd say. So you're both rooting for You're Tang. You're, you're rooting for uh, Tang with me. I am, then, but right? I think Life Coach couldn't take it. But yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so you th okay. you're predicting Life Coach. Uh, I think it's going to go 3-2, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then what are you, Lothar? Uh, I would say Life Coach 3-0. Mm, shocking. Well, <laughs> we're split across here in the panel, and we're going to give it over to Nimj and Annerable, who will be carrying us through the cast on this last match of day one. Thank you so much, guys. I'm here with Admirable, and we are going to see an amazing match. This will be the last match of the day here at Gfinity Hearthstone Masters 2. I'm so excited. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, this is always a you know big hype. I love watching Life Coach play. Uh, but more importantly, Froden really hit the nail on the head with Tang here. You know, I think nerves are really getting to him in this first match that he ended up playing, and I think some of the mistakes he made were just, you know, sometimes you're just you're absent-minded and you can't do anything about Come it. Come on, quartermaster... <laughs> And well, <laughs> for us, it's a new meta game. Semantics, semantics. Uh, but on the other stage, of course, we, we, he three owed his other opponent. And Bunny Muffin, I don't think he played badly in the, in the match that he lost to Life Coach. I actually think he played really well. Um, so, and in, in Cal even said it too. He said it was like a different player on the other stage when he was playing. So I think Nerves really did a big factor in it. So I think a big key for him in this match is to make sure that he keeps that under control, doesn't let it kind of get to his head, and, and make sure he's making solid plays the entire way through. And it, what it means is that Tang is actually coming as a winner of the last match because he won versus Bunny Muffins. And then Life Coach, lost versus Reynard. So Life Coach is kind of facing the winner being a loser himself. Like normally, if there would be not that much of a difference in experience, I would say this gives a, a, a big edge to Tang. But now it gives him a small edge against the ex like amounts of experience that Life Coach has. So I'm still giving it to, to Life Coach, seriously. Well, what I'm seeing here is how these matches line up and kind of going forward here. So we have Warlock, Druid, Paladin for Life Coach, Paladin, Mage, Druid for Tang. We, what what matchups is he trying to avoid and which ones does he actually want? And the thing that I'm that I'm looking at is kind of historically trying to play a value game versus Life Coach does not bode well for the player who's trying to outvalue him. And players who have tended to take aggressive stances, we'll take a look at, you know, Brainad's lineup, for instance. It's pretty aggressive, all things considered, especially versus what Life Coach is trying to do. He put together a 3-1 victory over that. So if Tank can end up being as aggressive as he wants to be versus Life Coach's lineup, I think that's where he's going to find his win rate. So, I mean, that's another big key to it, too. The only matchup I think that he really, really wants to avoid is probably Paladin versus Paladin. Oh, on the other hand, like um, Tang's Paladin is aggressive with Coghammer and Defender Vargas, and Life Coach's Paladin is really, really slow with cards like Kelfuzad. So we've seen it before, Life Coach playing versus... Was it Life Coach Reynard? I think we've seen a Paladin versus Paladin before, where the aggressive Paladin was actually able to take the game. Yeah, that was in, that was in uh, Life Coach's first match, I believe. Or are you talking about just a Paladin mirror in general, or are you talking about Life Coach's Paladin? I think it was Life Coach's Paladin. Yeah, I mean, it could have been. He definitely is. I mean, he's he's known for playing value cards. He's going to have stuff like Pilot at Sky Golem. 
in his palette. It just seems like he's been playing. He's the player I think he's played Pilot Sky Golem and competitive more than anyone else. Oh, yeah, definitely. He loves seen. the card. He definitely loves the card. Well, it gives him a lot of value, and it's a, a big card when you drop it on board. Yeah. But then there is the, there are many answers to it. So pretty standard mulligan here for Tang. Hanging on to Mech Whipper and Med Science. Oh, those are not strong replacements, though. There's a card that you typically never want to draw when you're playing Mech Mage, and it's Mirror Entity. It's like you just actually don't want to draw it. It can still be worse. Also, like, right now he got a Clockwork Gnome, which is great. You can, well, what do you actually do? Like, you can get the Mock Warper into Clockwork Gnome, or you can just go with the Med Sci Coin Med Scientist. But on the other hand, you don't want to get Mirror Entity that, that early. Mm. Look at Life Coach's hand, by the way. Only spells, no minions. There is Nourish. I'm going to be curious to see exactly what he does with his hand. How he's going to win with this. I, I, would, I would tend to say, just from looking at these hands, that Tang actually has an advantage here. You're really going to think through this. I mean, the, mm. So the disadvantage to playing Mad Scientist, obviously, is that you don't get Mac Warper on the board, and that you get one less minion. Uh, the advantage is, of course, that you're going to be able to use Mirror Entity when this Mad Scientist dies more often. But you already have a Mirror Entity in your hand. If you go with the Mech Warper and uh, Clockwork Gnome, you're not only getting a spare part, and you're kind of playing around mm -hmm. Wild Grove. Like, if there is a Wild Grove, you deal more damage. If there is no Wild Grove, then um, the Clockwork will die. But then if you get a Spider Tank on, uh, on the next turn, you will be able to play it for two mana. Yeah, I mean, all your draws really, really depend on this, too. No matter what, you're going to have a two drop next turn, and I think that's the bigger point of this. And what he should be thinking, I mean, I agree with this player right here. I think what he should be considering most is which one of these plays deals the most damage. Yeah, this is, de this is definitely the play that uh, deals the most damage. Yep. And he has the follow-up that is with the Mad Scientist. Well, Life Coach's hand, I can only say it's well nourished because it's nothing else. Like, he can, he can raft it to free, not really... I wouldn't waste a swipe here. I wouldn't like to use Innervate as well because you might need it to tend to your curve if you get a 5 drop. You might even want to like next turn Innervate and Nourish. I think Wrathing here is, is by far his best play. That's essential for sure. Um, on turn 3, I mean, he's going to have a, a lot of options moving forward and a, a big one is going to be Innervate for Nourish. But this is also setting up a turn 4 swipe really cleanly when you, after your opponent's played potentially something like Spider Tank. Right now I'm looking at Life Coach's hand, and I only see this BGH. And I'm looking at Tank's hand, and I see Mirenity and Mad Scientist, that's potentially another Mirenity. Mm -hmm. So this might decide the whole match. Do, do we know if, the, if Life Coach is playing Kazan Mystic? Because I know he did in the past. Uh, I, I'm not going to count it out of the question, but it does, like, Kazan Mystic does not really strike me as a very Life Coach card. It wouldn't surprise me to see it in here, but we know he has two copies of Big Game Hunter. And so I wouldn't expect it to be in here alongside those. Maybe when you've trimmed one or the other. Slug a bigger buff. question is going to be, does he have something like Zombie Chat to fight against Mirror Entity? That's a, that's a really big way to do that. I'm just going to nurse here. He's going to go for the Mana Crystals too. That's actually amazing because next turn he'll have six points of mana. So whatever he draws, he will almost be able to play it. Like Pilot of Sky Golem next turn if he, if he gets it. <laughs> And he has that such voucher. You know, Mirror Entity is actually a really weird play here, too, because if your opponent kills your Mad Scientist, you just don't get the other Mirror Entity. But on the other hand, how are they going to do it? Are they going to like play Keeper of the... What, what would you expect? Like Keeper of the Grove? Or maybe Dread of the Claw as Charge? Like, is the, whatever they play, you get a Mirror anyway. Like, you get a minion from the Mirror Entity. Yeah, but you're losing the second Mirror Entity. That's what's making it awkward. Like, you're losing some sort of value on this. You're losing actually losing some value, but... I, I mean, I don't mind playing the Mirror Entity because of that, because it is going to throw off your opponent's curve, and that's really the bigger purpose of Mirror Entity, I think, is to kind of play a disruption tool. But I don't mind Clockwork Gnome and something like Armor Ping. Plating it, just to keep it from getting hero power. And I don't mind stuff like that. Again, di I, the disruption is probably worth it, especially since you just saw Life Coach play Interfate Nourish for two mana crystals. Yeah. It's really indicative of the fact that he's got something to ramp into his hand, and he draws Wild Growth, which has got to be one of the worst draws in his deck right now. <laughs> yeah, this turn will be Big Game Hunter that's not hunting anything. And then, whoa, do you even Wild Growth? Uh, or like looking at the four cards you have in your hand, do you just keep Wild Growth for a draw? You know that you are going to, to be able to draw a card from it in four turns. 
this is really weird. Like both players have hands that are not that great. Like looking at um, a tank, he needs to top deck something to be able to play on t turn four. Mirror is he really what? bringing a lot of pressure into this match? It's always very good versus Druids. And uh, especially versus Life Coach playing a super greedy deck, I'm not sure if he's playing Zombie Chows. Because sometimes you can just give the Zombie Chow to your opponent and you're really like, all right, I Zombie Chow and then my 5 drop and I'm good. You know, with a swipe in hand, I really just don't mind playing like Wild Growth and Hero Powering down this Mad Scientist and really trying to deny the second Mirror Entity before it ends up being a factor. Because again, he has six Mana Crystals, but Tang is going into four mana. Like, now he's going to be going, he's going to have eight going into his turn after Tang has four. It's so, so very easy for him to draw something, pop the Meteor Entity, and then swipe to deny. Oh, he got a second Meteor like Entity. Oh my gosh, that's, I mean, that's that's like the worst draw in the deck. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> you can't even play Both it of though. these players have drawn back-to-back -back really, really bad cards. Well, the fun fact is that if Life Coach would go with um, BGH, then Tank would be able to play that Meteor Entity. And the Clockwork. With this, he can just play the Clockwork and pink face. Do you really use armor plating on a clockwork? I normally I wouldn't because of the um, Antonidas. Well, now I don't. I don't think you do because you've uh, your opponent's already committed to hero powering on the mad scientist, and so at this point, the the hero power is basically overloaded. There's no reason to use the armor plating before it was your. So your opponent didn't have an option to hero power, was the purpose of it. But now you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, you can always turn this uh, fireball if you get Antonidas as well. In case if you if you get a like, time rewinder from the Clockwork Gnome. All right, so Life Coach facing those small minions, and Mirani double swipe. What is this? Oh my gosh! Well, I think in in a game this slow, in terms of you know the pace of aggression being held here, I, you have to give an advantage to Life Coach because he's going to be hitting his nine and ten before his opponent's hitting their six and seven. Normally I would, but then um, Tank has uh, Azur Drake next turn, which will be a powerful card, and there is this mirror entity that's going to grant him a minion. So... No, I, don't, I don't see this being a problem. He just plays big game hunter and then swipes. And he, His opponent gets another mirror entity off this, and he just... Oh, I guess that's... A, you know, that's actually... This is a big problem now because he wants to swipe before he plays the big game hunter because he's a very unaware of the fact that Tang has drawn his mirror entity. Yeah. Oh, this is a nightmare. It is, especially because you are facing that one mirror entity and you don't want to face another one. So if Life Coach actually, if he gets relatively greedy here, it ends up paying off for him in spades. Life Coach will be so surprised <laughs> when there is no mirror entity. Well, he'll immediately yeah, know. I think this is the play he's got to make anyway, and just kind of hope that he draws a minion that isn't too great for his opponent. Because imagine if he just swipes here and then doesn't pop the mirror entity. That's Look at his face. Look at his face. What's ah? Uh, he knows. Oh yeah. He knows exactly. Wow, that is. I mean, that's that's like a major fist bump moment for him. Oh, definitely. And Tang is just in such bad shape after this. Well, he will need to play the mirror entity and uh, Frostbolt, I guess, because just playing this other drag into a four-two doesn't do much. And the good thing for Tang is that Life Coach only has two cards in hand. And if Tang develops a mirror entity, if he, if he plays it, he knows that Life Coach was really agonizing before playing it on PGH. It's an important draw. Life Coach just needs the draws. And he gets them. Ancient of Lore is the perfect card. Well, sort of. I mean, he gives his opponent a 5-5 five, five if he plays it. No, no, he doesn't play it this turn. Like, this turn you play Slash Belcher because he doesn't play it. I actually, I mean, I don't mind playing the 5 so slow that do you even care that it's getting checked? I think I think that drawing the cards is just totally fine. Oh, there is another bit as well. All right, that's not bad. He he was able to replenish a couple of cards. That's such an awkward spot. Mirror Entity is so good versus Druid. It is, yes. That's a, that's like a seven mana arcane intellect. But on the other hand, <laughs> Life Coach knows that double mirror. He will be able maybe to remove the board after this, and then Mech Mage is out of steam. Now the bigger tale of this is the mana difference. Nine ma Life Coach is going into ten mana as Tang will be spending uh, his six mana turn. 
How do you play on your turn, though? Uh, you can possibly just use the armor plating now and make a great trade and play Pilot the Shredder and Cogmaster. Or you can just go for face, but I, I don't think it's it's the time to go for face. I think it's you, you want to try to trade, especially because you've seen one swipe already. You've seen one wrath, you've seen one swipe. You think when you've seen wrath and swipe, it's time to trade? I think you should just be going for pressure. If you attack for five and play Pilot Shredder and Cogmaster, what does that achieve? I don't well, hate. I don't hate it. I think it's like yeah. a different line of play. I what well, I really don't like this because this is like. Oh, I don't like the stealth. Yeah, I don't. I don't like the stealth either. I would. I would have played Cogmaster here first. Double well. force. Oh my god, he can double for double force face for twelve. <laughs> what a massive amount of damage. Yeah, I don't like this. It's like, obviously we can see that he has a swipe in hand, but when your opponent has a swipe, you get so punished for it here. I actually don't even really like the trade. I would have favored the face damage. Because, he's, like you said, he's running out of steam. He needs to take the damage on his opponent's face and then have his opponent trade with his minions instead of the other way around. Like, he's not getting a massively favorable trade here by any means. And he's out of steam. Like, he needs the extra damage. I think the armor plating was correct, but then going for face was better, as you said. Yeah, I kind of But you, still armor, you do still armor, armor plating so that it doesn't what trade one to one. Do? Yeah, put your opponent in an awkward position, but the five extra damage is very relevant. All right, so Tying can draw a card. He has to get something good. But he is exactly that out of steam. This mad scientist is not going to give him any secrets. We know that Tying is not playing open cards. Yeah, this is some pretty, pretty, really bad draws from Tang, honestly. it's. I mean, he started with Mad Scientist. He drew two mirror entities, and now he's drawn his other Mad Scientist. Yeah, he had like an interesting start with Warper coin into Mad Scientist, but then the mid game was dead. Like turn three and four, nothing happened. Even though uh, Life Coach actually was ramping up, like Tang didn't pressure at all. And right now, Life Coach has all the means to, to stop the aggression here. Like Force of Nature trades with this easily. And um, yeah, he gets a shade on the board and it's all the tools. It's pretty much going to do it. The cards in Tang, Tang's hand don't do anything. Like he needs Dr. Boom. He needs uh, Antonidas, but he spent the, the spare cards. I wonder if he plays Ragnaros. I would venture to say his mech mage does not play Ragnaros. I would agree with you. <laughs> but then, like, some some players do add it. Life Coach really considering killing this uh, no killing this snow chugger with hero power in the in the 2-2 two -two tree instead of killing the Sludge Buncher, so the Sludge Buncher can continue to attack. I like it. It's not like he will be using the hero power much often. And uh, Life Coach is not threatened at all. Like, he is full health almost, like 21. And he has a taunt set up. He has that uh, Shade of Nostramus. So right now, Life Coach is going to go card for card, and uh, it looks good. This is not Dr. Boom. Well, now not having a <laughs> now I'm being frozen on the hero power is a uh, minorly relevant here because of the second force of nature. Curious what he really wants to draw to get in this game. Oh, he wa he really wanted to get Doctor Boom. Yeah, Doctor Boom is pretty much the best draw in the deck. Really, no question about it. Wait, would Force Nature have been better? 14, 20, it would have been 24. 24 total I mean, like damage. Savage Roar? Force, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm sorry, Savage Roar. Savage Roar is probably the second best draw. But, I mean, Doctor Boom, this is just closing the game. Like, where on earth does Tang find a win here? Well, Tang will have to get his own Doctor Boom, but even then, uh, Life Coach is such an advantage right now. And he still has a lot of cards. Like, uh, is he running Kel Fuzad in this list? Like, I've seen Kel Fuzad in his pilot deck. Life Coach is continuing to choke out all of his options here, Theo. Oh man, this is tough. I'm oh, not good, Sean. Yeah. It's so annoying this to see at this <laughs> moment. <laughs> this is this is where Druid is really is, you know, one of the shining decks is when you've gone card for card and you get to this end game and you have very powerful draws in your opponent's 
you know, still has a lot of early game stuff they could draw. Like even is something is Spider Tank really any better here than a Noetron? No, that's it's really it's really thing. not. And it just you know, once you've gotten to this point of the game and Life Coach has sustained as much as he has, this is it, you know, it just this is where it ends. Also, it seems like Life Coach is kind of at the beginning had a lot of bad cards, so it means like all oh, the bad cards are out of the way now. Now he's go going to top the big one. Well, there's a very big one. And as that's well. probably the game, if I count correctly, that's 14 plus 9. That should be enough. Like you attack <laughs> Anayotron with the bomb. <laughs> so much 14 fun. plus 9. That should be enough. I'm not going to do the math anymore. Yeah, it's okay. definitely more than enough. That, that's for sure. Uh, Life Coach is going to. Like, Life Coach is like the math for me. <laughs> <laughs> he's counting and he got it. Just attack with the bomb first, the attack with hero, kill the Niotron, and then all it. Oh, it doesn't actually matter that much. Actually, this matters. This is more effective damage to the face. Because then you have a 50 50 chance to roll that versus a. Uh, versus a 33%. So overkill sure. by five. Life Coach going to take the first game, of course, and this is best of five. So this Druid's going to be locked now, but that match was like. That typically, I would say, is going to favor. Mac Mage, Mage for but sure. It's uh, his draw, like his opening hand was very good, and then his first like six draws were basically non-relevant. The, the, like so just, bad. They, they had were very, so bad. very, very low impact as far as the game was concerned. And Life Coach didn't have a fast start. I mean, we saw that he had Innervate into Nourish for mana, but he didn't really do too much after that. It wasn't like his draw was super explosive afterwards, but Tang's draw was so poor that it really magnified how powerful Life Coach's draw was. There is a saying, be careful what you wish for. I'm sure Tang wanted to have mirror entities in this match. <laughs> so he, he got them, right? He got them. He was able oh, he to got them, all right. Yeah, he got them. He got, all, he got both Mad Scientist with zero value and then both mirror entities. Drawing two mana two twos, just like regular yeah, two twos, it's apparently tough. it's not very good. And um, then he got like a Nyotron really, really late. Life Coach got Dr. Boom. Um, so overall, a very good win for Life Coach and uh, setting up Druid um, as the winning deck. Right now he's left with his Paladin and his Handlock against uh, Mechmage is still alive, Paladin and a Druid that we haven't seen on this stream yet. Yeah, that's true. We actually have not seen exactly how Tang's Druid deck is built as far as the main stage is concerned. So game two is going to get underway here. And he's going to go with Mech Mage again. You know, this is something that you see very common in Conquest. People just queuing up the deck. He just lost with, which isn't a big deal. You got to win a game. You with have every to win deck with anyway. it. And he um, gets Mirandity again. <laughs> he can Mulligan it away. Beautiful. He can just keep it straight away, along with Lothab and the Goblin Blast Mage. Oh, man. Paladin versus Mage. So many dudes are going to die in this game. It's just an how, how How important do you think something like True Silver Champion is? against Mech Mage. Do you think this is like a keep in the opening hand? I know that this is a card I very often keep when I play Paladin, but is stuff like Zombie Chow or Shield and Minibot going to be more important in this match? I think it's more important. Um, I like having Zombie Chow, Juggler, Master, Shielded Minibot, like stuff that can um, respond to the Cogmaster, to early aggression, and just dismantle the, the mech, um, mech setup in the very beginning. Like, True Silver might be too late. If you have a coin, you can think about it, because you can play it on turn three. But then uh, you want to have that early early game. Well, he's thought about it, and he decided to keep it. Oh, Mind Control Tech. This is like this is something we've seen. This is in two of Life Coach's decks, actually, is Mind Control Tech. And it really speaks to the kind of game he's trying to play is that he's going to concede the early board very often, and he's trying to punish opponents with that, with stuff like my control deck. And he is very patient. So like he's patiently watching his opponent play the fourth minion, and then he takes it. So <laughs> it basically works for him. But here, the Mech Warper being dropped for Tang, he has a good follow-up. Um, there is no way for Life Coach to deal with it right now. So Tang will be able to benefit from either Pilot Shredder or Tinker um, Tinker Town Technician. This is a really tough spot, actually. Mm. He can yeah. clear out this Mech Warper in terms of you know card economy pretty favorably, but he has to pay a lot of life to do it. You mean like uh, coin the Master for Battle and then attack the Mech Warper? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think this is the good moment. Like you're not afraid of Blast Mage uh, yet, so you can use your dudes Reporting to your advantage. And you have a turn free play, you have a turn four play. So it's not terrible, I like it. 
like not doing that play, he will be able to true silver something. But right now he's taking the initiative. Like if you allow Tang to play another minion and then you play true silver, there's always one minion on board that's doing damage to you. So you're basically behind on tempo. But with this, it's like uh, yeah, like you always say, heads up, heads up play, where you where you go and um, actually try to respond to what's happening. Yep. Tang actually really senses these two. He's going to try to shut this down before it gets out of hand. I actually really like this too, because now his Annoyatron's going to go unchecked as well. And then he's going to have multiple options moving forward. Kalthazad getting added. I just love this deck. To a hand that already <laughs> had a ton of mana. This is 16, 21, 25, 28. He's got 34 mana worth of cards in his hand on turn three. Life Coach is so fun to watch because he plays all those fun cards that people mostly forget. Like a lot of people just play aggro decks with the same cards, and Life Coach is playing Kill to Zod, Pilot the Sky Golem, MC Tech as well, even though it's like cheap on mana, it's still a very interesting card to see in the tournament setup. Oh man. Four mana on turn three. <laughs> Great value. <laughs> oh, he's just got going, right now. He's just going to wait. Come on, he's just going to patiently wait. Um, I, I think you do have to play the mind control attack here. If you play a dude, if you just do that, you're not contesting anything that's going to get played next turn. And then you want to have a body on board that can contest minions, and then you will play true silver to be able to kill something big. And with the Sludge Belcher, you can Engaging you can kind of get back to the game. But it's definitely good to think about this. This place. Yeah, I think with how much mana he has, he really just needs to try to buy as much time as he possibly can. And one of his best ways to do that, of course, is just by getting minions on the board. And even though my Contra Tag is a pink gnome, he's still doing his job. <laughs> you know, it's a decent body, free, free, for free. It's a great beard he's got. Will you dye your beard and like cosplay my Contra Tag? No, it's not, not for me. And you like enter the crowd and you steal the fourth person. I'm already too pink as it is. Like my, my skin just kind of has like a pink tone to it. Oh, okay. Imagine if the beard was pink also. I would just blend in. It wouldn't even look like I had a beard. Wonder. That would be so weird. <laughs> <laughs> like transparent beard. All right, so Tank here having a lot of plays. Um, I might like the Tinker Tank Technician because you're getting a 4-4 and a spare part that you can maybe use. Like, if you get a plus one attack, you can trade with the mind control attack. Okay. Yeah, just gonna favor damage. I mean, he wants to commit the mind control attack to a certain attack. You know, if he didn't kill, if he either attacked the token or he didn't hero power the token, it would just get killed directly, and then this this three three would run into the mech warper, and I think that's the situation he's trying to avoid is this mech warper dying. But then again, the life coach gets consecration, so he can clear the board. Uh, does he play true silver or consecration here? True silver will uh, enable him to attack next turn as well, but then he has to uh, leave one of the mechs on board. So how important it is to clear to deny the mech before turn five? Well, he can't deny the mechs really entirely, other than consecration. Let me think. Doesn't feel like a very doesn't feel like a very life coach thing to do. This really does. Again, he's just got so much mana in his hand. He doesn't really need to play too terribly efficiently with his mana because he's just going to scale so well as he gets into the late game that he just needs to make sure that he's at a comfortable position while he's using all of his mana. I think also like what speaks about using True Silver here is that the five, uh, turn five is mostly Azadrake that you can deal with uh, with the True Silver weapon, plus the fact that last turn was just a spider tank and a ping, which can mean that there are not that many mechs, so that there is not that much mech warper value. But we can see there's actually a lot of value here. It's a very strong turn yeah. for, for Tang. I really like the trade here too. You protect your pilot shredder. Yeah, I think that's actually super key right now. Second consecration. Now, th this is, I mean, the game is going to get kind of, you know, it's going to get, a, it's probably going to get a little bit out of hand here in favor of Life Coach. You know, this true silver champion really buying him so much time. And then, of course, it's got to deal with this situation as well. So I think you're pretty, pretty likely to see Fireball here or just not an attack. The longer the game goes, the, the better situation for Life Coach. For Mech Mage, Mech Mage really has to 
snowball and do enough damage to finish the game with fireballs or like fireball frostball. But right now, what Tank is doing is it's trading minion for minion. He will be able to build up some board, but then it is awkward again. Like I, f I might actually favor playing the technician here, using the hero uh, hero power to clear the belcher. First, you attack and see what you get. Unless you actually fireball. You can also fireball this and uh, attack the one to clear it and then pink face. I think a bigger story is he's got to figure out exactly how he wins this game. And it doesn't start with this hand, that's for sure. Like, he needs to draw an Archmage, he needs to draw Dr. Boom, he needs to he needs his opponent to make inefficient attacks instead of him being able to do it. I th honestly, I, I think that Azure Drake is a totally reasonable play. This is fine too. I mean, seeing what you get is important. And Shield and Minibot, pretty darn good one. Um, you know, getting the mech, I, I, I think I would have tended to, to attack, I'm sorry, <laughs> to play this mech warper, I'm sorry, the Tinker Town Technician first, though. Yeah. Because if he doesn't play it first, he doesn't always get a spare part. I think he actually forgot about that. And uh, he got the mech, so he didn't get punished. That was life coach was like, come on. And you can see Tang just, you know, obviously very visibly tired. Again, a very long fight for Korea for him. So not surprising to see him in life coach kind of a, you know, almost on home turf. Yeah, sometimes when you're tired, you just go on default mode, and it's just it's just tough to play when you definitely. Yeah. And you look at technician, and you're like, oh, this is the four four that grants me the spare part. You actually forget <laughs> that, it, that you need a mech on board. Well, there's mad scientist right on time on turn seven, and we haven't seen mirror entities yet, so they will be powerful. Life coach has two big cards and a quartermaster. So he will be able to play around the Mirror Entity a bit. But if the Quartermaster is getting dropped uh, earlier, like next turn, Mirror Entity might be deadly. Tang is not out of this game yet. Like, he still has cards that are powerful here. I think he just might... He should draw cards here. I would go for Azure Drake and Mad Scientist. Like, Azure Drake first, see what I get. And then just kill the one to go four damage to face. Well, I really don't mind both up here. You know, Consecration looks like it's going to be a bit of a problem. Or potentially a bit of a problem. And this also makes sure that you can apply a lot of the pressure to your opponent. I mean, the 5-5 five five is definitely relevant. I think I like Azure Drake better, but I can understand why he's playing Lothip. Yeah, but on the other hand, like I would like to see a shield and meaning attack on the one two and then four damage to face. Because you know that Consecration is not getting dropped next turn. But I can also understand like attacking that with a 4-4 four, um, four, four and trying to keep the shield on. This might be important in whatever tr it gets dropped from Pilot of the Sky Golem. Yeah, I'm actually curious if the shield yields more damage in the long run than the 4 damage on face does. Which I think it, I think it's probably pretty close to equal with a chance to deal more. It gives you more flexibility. Mm. Because now you can actually trade with whatever it's getting dropped and you're still going to attack with the shield of Meemoth. All right, so we are going to see Magical Creature at 2-5 It's actually mech. pretty good right now. It is. And then my pile of the Shredder and a dude. Two five uh, I'm okay with Quartermaster also. Again, he's just got so much mana in his hand that he just needs to get stuff on the board to fight. And as long as he can fight enough that he doesn't die, very easily from his opponent, he's, I'd say he's typically got an advantage. Do you think this favors Kelf is at more next turn? Because you got two minions that can actually trade and, and resurrect? Well, he's going to be resurrecting one one instead. So it just re it really depends on what happens this turn. Oh, Goblin Blast, Blast Mage, Mage is an one interesting off, pickup, though. yeah. You can't ping this, right? This is the... Can't get targeted by spells and hero powers. Yeah, that, that guy can only be targeted by attacks. That's so and awkward then. Rise. How do you kill like <laughs> eat two minions to kill it? You just gotta attack it. Honestly, the mirror entity at this point feels like it's pretty darn good. Your opponents played so much early game and mid game stuff that the mirror entity is very likely to play a strong disruption. Yep. Not to mention you're filtering your deck and you are not going to draw into it. But this tank, he can still draw into a second mirror entity. We've seen that before. Oh, okay. Yeah, he got uh, a bit unlucky with that. He's that's Miranity, all right. 70, 70 cards for Tang, 19 cards for Life Coach. So basically, Tang gets two cards ahead on draws. Yeah, I'm gonna try to play a grindy game here. 
And if you played Lothal to play around Consecrate, yeah, I, I agree. It doesn't really make sense to play Cog Master if that's what he's trying to play around. Oh, that's a fantastic card. He can play around their entity. He can just clear the board here easily. Yeah, this is looking really, really bad for Tang here. This is just a no-brainer. Tang is like no mechs. He has a Blast Mage, Cog Master, and a Fireball. No pressure at all. Oh man. And more minions, even a knife to face. Or hard to use face on the knife. <laughs> like every time I'm going to see the knives now, I'm going to see like hard to use flying in his opponent. Which is really weird. I can't picture a knife with an actual just a face attached to it. It's just not. <laughs> All right, no mech. Like, if he would get a mech now, let's say um, Clockwork Gnome, maybe there would be a chance to turn it, to turn this around. But he really needs to get the Blast Mage value. Yeah, the fact that he is really kind of lost out on snowballing for two games in a row now, he's been kind of held at bay both times. That really is speaking to, you know, exactly what, where the game plans are, and kind of also speaking to the way that Tang's draws have been, because he again, he's had pretty strong early games, and then like his mid game pans out so kind of awkwardly, you know, where he's got like five drops that aren't doing too much in the situations he's getting into. You know, he turns seven mad scientist is obviously not the strongest mad scientist uh, that you can play in this game. And when you get into these sorts of battles with life coaches, this is where this guy really wins a ton of his games is because he's always got some sort of late game powerhouse. Yeah, and it's so so interesting because Tang doesn't have a, a weird deck. He has a, a very stable mech mage. And he's playing versus super greedy decks that Life Coach is playing, where normally mech mage is favored because you just snowball early and then you finish the games with fireballs or a frostbolt. But he never get he never got that kick. Like he got the mech now. Again and now you're trying the late game. Uh, I mean, what else can you expect to draw? This is what your deck's full of. You still had Dr. Boom and Antonidas. Well, your opponent has Ashbringer. All right, so. All right he needs to... Not, not totally over yet. I mean, this is eight points of damage. Yeah, but he used uh, one Frostbow, one Fireball already. He, he needs the Dot Boom or Antonidas to get back. It's a lot. On the other hand, Life Coach <laughs> doesn't have any taunts now. Eight is a lot. With Consecration, he will be able to clear, but then take five damage from Blast Mage, which is not acceptable. Yeah, I would tend to armor plating. Oh, I actually like armor plating the Anoyatron here, I think. Well, with this, you protect uh, the Cogmaster. There is a silence. What does it change? Um, he will be able to kill the, that, that Cogmaster easily. But then Blast Mage is um, outside of reach. Like, you can kill with weapon, but you don't want to. Because then a simple fireball kills you. Mm. Right? No, it's like, yeah. I don't so. really know if he has much of a choice, honestly. I mean, if you let it live, it's dealing five damage, too. There's no real, no real reason to let that happen. Yeah. Wow, so Tank still has the chance to take this game. But like, it's not it's not even like a fireball top deck. I mean if he top decks fireball is it's great for him, he wins. But still like he if he gets something like Dr. Boom, he can maybe still claw back to take this game. Yeah, I'm thinking of some uh some piloted shredder drops that Life Coach would really want. Stuff like Lightwell and Vitality Totem are really oh, good. Right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those those cars actually win your games. Oh man, seven points of health. Oh, come on, he doesn't there's have no, a spell. Yeah, there's no spell, though. The armor plating, and it's... Is it happening again? He used the stealth before. Uh, I, I mean, I still think this is a totally fine, but you just ping your opponent's face and drop Archmage. This is exactly the same situation as against Reynad. He had the stealth, he stealthed, he spotted the Shredder, then he topped the Antonidas, and now he used armor plating and got Antonidas again. I still think it's right. I still think armor plating is you, <laughs> play. You play. You still play it. Yeah, I think yeah. I think you just ping your opponent's face and drop Archmage. Yeah, obviously you have to. You're threatening lethal with just the five power body. It's not like you're going to stay with it in your hand and wait for like mis mysterious Frostbolt to show up in the in the next 15 cards. Mm. Yeah, holding on to this Archmage, I think would be. Also, actually, I, I really don't like being now. 
Um, let's think about pinging the owl. Like, if the owl stays, then like Defender of Argus clears Antonidas. Or like a simple Bluegill clears Antonidas with the owl. Simple Juggler clears Antonidas. Yeah, I got a feeling you're going to see Kel'Thuzad. But this means I mean, that three jugglers has twelve and a half percent chance here with three. <laughs> I think like looking at this board state, I think Tang has a great chance to win, and he doesn't even have to top deck like, anything. Antonite is going to deal five with one damage from your power, and then Life Coach might not have enough power to finish. Wow, the game. Life Coach now has a twenty-five percent chance to do it though with this situation, and I think he's really looking at the idea of playing playing Kel'Thuzad. I think he still play Kel'Thuzad. I really do. If you play Kofuzad, can you kill um, the mage in two turns? Like this turn, you deal 5 damage to face, you get them to 18. Mm. And then next turn, you're going to deal 5, this 13, 6 Kofuzad. And uh, part of the Shredder that's going to get resurrected. And yeah, I think, I you think have it, lethal, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so basically, if you play Kofuzad, you give your opponent one chance to draw an out. And that out has to be Frostbolt, Fireball. Uh, Oh, he actually killed it. I think it's actually... It might be good, because if there were, if there is a spell, then he loses for sure. Mech Warper. Wait. Um, yeah, I mean, this is still this is still going to be lethal very often for Life Coach. Yeah, he just needs to hit with the juggler. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> he needs to hit with the juggle. He has two chances, 14, right? 15. He's got 20 points of damage right here. And he's got two chances to juggle a minion. <laughs> oh, man, the juggles. The juggles today are so crazy. Oh, this is great. I can't believe this. Okay, life coach, let's do it. RDU juggles. RDU faces. Put an RDU face on your knife and farm your face on the board and just throw it. Let me throw it, man. Don't throw the game, throw the juggle. He's trying to figure out a way to win more often or stay alive, and it's just not here. I don't think there is. Like, you're dying to the ping, you have to juggle face. Let's see if Life Coach oh can do a, a good RDU impression. Is he going to stand this up? is a 75% chance to win, by the way. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, what's happening? Oh, he oh my gosh. Now it's 50-50. Oh my gosh, it's this is 50-50 to win or lose the game. Oh my God, Life Coach. Life Coach. Life Coach. Life Coach. Oh, he missed the juggle. Oh, he has to, like, RDU needs to coach him. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't believe this. Oh, man. What just happened? RDU needs to coach Life Coach. How's the juggle? Wow. Life Coach, this is, not, this is not how you win games. And Tang is actually. is actually pinging the. Fa oh, he got a fireball. It doesn't even matter now. Oh, that gosh. was. That was a crazy what? game. What just happened, right? Like, oh, he, you know, he just missed a bunch of juggles. That's what happened. Oh, man, this is Hearthstone. I just I just love it, those games. So we have a tie. Yeah. The Magmage was finally able to win the game, even though, like, the draws and, like, oh. Well, pretty lucky to win. I mean, he was in a 25% chance to win scenario, and, uh, it, you know, I got lucky in, in winning the game. That's just, that's part of Hearthstone sometimes, is that percentages just work out in your favor. But do you think it's uh, if Life Coach would not kill Antonidas, if he would attack face with the um, with the weapon, then he had 100% uh, kill next turn. But Antonidas will, will survive. Antonidas would have to go for face. I actually, I mean, I think he thought about his knife juggler line and understood that you know he's gonna have a 75% chance to win. And I think when you really take into account that scenario, it makes more sense to play it the way that he did. Um, really, the only time he doesn't have a 75% chance to win is when his opponent draws Azure Drake into a minion or draws Dr. Boom. But then again, Antonidas uh, was killing him anyway if there would be, uh, be a Frostbolt. Like any or spell. Oh, Mirror Entity, actually. Yeah, Mirror Entity. Yeah, there was still one Mirror Entity. So he played into 75% as opposed to. Or even like Entity Clockwork topic. Gnome and then ping the Clockwork Gnome. And, and then, then get. Yeah. But then you, ha you don't have. You actually have enough mana to actually yeah, kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 10 mana. All right. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I think it was actually, I think the way he played it was, was right. I think it was the way he was supposed to do it. All right. Well, I, I liked uh, the going for face because I like going face, but then <laughs> <laughs> the percentage chance of winning would probably be close. It goes down a little bit by not killing the Archmage. All right. But it's, it's more manly. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's the measure of the way you want to make Hearthstone plays, that's a great deal then. Well, we had a lot of fun with Juggles, so um, <laughs> what's left for Life Coach right now is he's Paladin still, he needs to win a game with it. 
and he still has his hand lock. And then for Tang, there is um, a Paladin and druid. a Druid. Yep. We might see a Paladin-Paladin mirror match. We could, and again, I was sort of saying that's the situation I think he wants to avoid is playing a Paladin mirror, because you know playing a value game versus life coach, not a very good way to go. But you know, Paladin versus Warlock, this used to be a match that was thought to be extremely good, but I actually don't think it's that favored for Paladin, favored at all. I think Handlock typically will have an advantage in this matchup. So just kind of looking at the way these classes are, are lined up right now, I think that Life Coach has a minor edge. But, I mean, this is still anyone's game, though. I mean, you know, if he just gets, if he gets, if Tank gets one good Druid versus Handlock game, which is actually what game three is going to be right here. Handlock versus Druid. This is the matchup that Life Coach, I think, really wanted to avoid. So I guess when you look at it, they both had matchups they kind of wanted, like Ten, Tank wanted to avoid Paladin versus Paladin. And if he did that, he got Druid versus Warlock which is kind of exactly what he wanted. So now he's going to have Paladin versus Warlock and then Paladin versus Paladin. I think a one game with that, I think if this, he wins this one. This is a 50-50 now, in my opinion, because Tank really wanted to avoid Paladin versus Handlock, and he did. Right now, if Handlock wins, then Paladin will face Paladin. Druid will play, face Paladin. If Druid wins, he might still face Handlock Paladin, but he then has a Paladin-Paladin mirror that he has to win. It's too many Paladins. Yeah, has a lot of white and Paladins. <laughs> All right, so back to the game. We have the Druid running a lot of interesting cards. Not care if it's very good, but there's no white growth for tying. Nothing really specific. Standard Druid cards. Um, did you know that like uh, somebody did did the stats and there is what ten cards in all Druid decks that are the same always? Ten staple cards. That was at a certain event. Yes, that was yes. A certain. Event. I mean, that's not surprising at all. Druid has a lot of just very strong staple cards that it has to play. It's a very linear deck. Yeah, it is. Can you say, like, um, Druid is actually easy to play? No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it is. I think Druid gets in a lot of sticky situations where they have to make a lot of, of decisions that... And that's pretty, that's pretty much every single deck that I, I think is out there is that you have to make tricky decisions at some point along the game. Oh, man, look at this. Faramir got knocked out from the tournament. Airbrushed eliminates Faramir. That juggle, man. That juggle hurts. He was <laughs> one juggle. One juggle. Snowballed Faramir's tournament destiny into oblivion. <laughs> Airbrush is going to move on. Oh, man. We are going to see Airbrush in top eight. That's actually really exciting. Yeah, I was looking forward to that. I've heard, you know, I've heard really good stuff about Airbrush game. I heard a lot of good stuff about Airbrush for a long time. That's how you know that Hearthstone's not easy to play pretty much in any situation, is that you have the fact that you have the same guys consistently winning over and over again and performing well on ladder and that... Not everyone does that. I mean, the game is just, it's just not that simple. Yeah. There's some situations that are simple. Like, obviously, if you have five mana and have one five mana minion, and that five mana minion is probably going to hit the board, great, easy situation. <laughs> but, you know, picking all the right decks and then making all the right card choices for those, and then also sequencing those right and understanding your opponent's game plan and your own, that's you know, a lot of stuff to, to account for. Definitely. Like, you have to know how to play your decks. You, know, to, you need to know how to play your decks against specific decks as well, setups, and uh, the small decisions you have to make. All right, so what's the decision here? Just coin Lotha. Maybe let's talk about this matchup first. Like, who do you think has an edge, and how does Druid win versus Handlock? I think Druid has a pretty significant edge. And the reason is because the deck kind of moved away from being an aggressive deck that wanted to charge at your opponent's face with Druid of the Claw and turned into like a grindy value deck. And at the same time, Handlock, I mean, this happened ages ago, but at the same time, Handlock moved away from like burst bursty combos with Power Overwhelming and Faces Manipulator and tried to move into its own kind of grindy deck. And I think that at the end of the day, Druid just has bigger minions on average than Handlock has. And while Handlock certainly has a, a couple of very powerful big minions, Druid has a lot of powerful big minions. And I think that that's really where it's finding a substantial edge. I and think that, what's also important is that Druid has those cards like GH and Keeper of the Grove that target um, and prey on the big minions that Handlock is going to play. Yeah, they both play, they're both playing BGH, but BGH is much more effective for Druid. Oh man, this curve is just crazy. Um, not to mention that he just like Tang just played a four, turn four Ancient of Lore. He can follow up with Lothep on 5, Sylvanas on 6, and then on 7 he can play Scenarius. Hmm. Or just combo for the win if you think he has enough minions. Well, it's looking like combo is going to be a, a very realistic possibility in the coming turns. For Life Coach, turn 6, Torisan is green. Is that the play? 
Like, whenever Torisan is green on turn 6, you play Torisan when you have this many cards in hand. I certainly don't think it's a bad... It's hard for Emperor to really be a bad play when you're not facing... I, I always think, like, Torisan is... Um, Torisan is actually a Japanese card. In, my, in, the, in the back of my mind, I, I read it, Torisan. Is that, like, is like that supposed to be a Japanese like, accent? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And like, if you if you are really friendly with Tori-san, you can call the last samurai. Tori-kun, Tori-kun, <laughs> please help me with my cards. <laughs> and if he helps, it's Tori-sama. Oh, you're just you're, <laughs> you're going deep down this rabbit hole, man. I think I think our toast is really nailed it with Tarzan. Tarzan, it's like, it's like oh, great pronunciation. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, I think it's good. All right, so Lapko just putting some defenses here. No spells this turn. Double Keeper. Ancient Watcher has to be like one of the most awkward minions to silence. Well, that's typically why you just don't silence it. <laughs> I think Sylvanas is pretty darn good here. Yeah, there is something on board. Yeah, it's hard for, if Sylvanas dies, it's hard for it to not get some sort of significant value here. Are you afraid of silence? No, I don't think so. I think if your opponent's silencing, like, two things are happening. Number one, you're pulling a silence out of their hand, and they're getting a 2-1 on the board. And then number two, you still have a 5-5 body they have to deal with, so they're not developing their own 5-5 bodies typically when they're having the silence this early. Yeah. Like, he didn't play Emperor on turn six, so I think a lot of times you can kind of assume he doesn't have it. Um, and when you play Sylvanas, obviously he no can't play Emperor anymore with this being on board. And if he silences, even if he had Emperor, he wouldn't be able to play because he's not going to have the mana for it. So just kind of just everything is working in favor of playing Sylvanas' this turn. Oh man, there is a Shadow Flame. If yeah. you attack with your Defender Vargas into whatever, the Shadow Flame, you still have three points of mana that you can use to tap. The board is cleared. So what do you gain? Impossible. On turn seven, something big can be dropped. Like a scenarios, for example. I don't, I don't really think that Shadow Flaming is necessarily his option here. I mean, he might conclude that just because he's facing so much damage and it's such a scary amount of damage to be facing. Um, but I think that creating board tension here is probably just... It's something that's so important I here. Wonder. So just like probably like Iron Beak Owl and Sludge Belcher, I think is... I've, yeah, I agree. That you, you just want your opponent to like... You want them to kind of kill your minions and then continue to invest in their board position and then find a big Shadow Flame turn. The great part about Silence and Sludge Belcher is that they still have to go through the 5-6. They can kill your Sludge Belcher, but it doesn't change that much. You still have that wall you, you put up. But then again, you're getting closer and closer to combo. I really wonder how much Life Coach is thinking about my control deck. And uh, Druid, it's, it, it is possible, actually. It was kind of popular. He's playing Mind Control deck in his own Druid deck. Yeah, but on the other hand, like he has three minions. That, uh, if they are stolen, it's not that bad. Like, two minions, that if Iron B gets stolen or a 2-3, it's fine. If the 5-6 gets stolen or a 3-5, hmm. well, he can still play around that. Well, nothing's going to get stolen anymore because it's been... You know, Archimedes said something to say about it. All right, so, Scenarius? Well, why are you playing Scenarius is really the first. The, the bigger question right here, he's got to figure out, you know, what his game plan is moving forward. Does he want to just pressure damage? Does he want to fight a grind? You know, these are these are questions he's got to ask himself. What do you think about, like, playing Scenarius and buffing those minions and then trading into the 5-6 and a 3-5? I think you're leaving yourself with very little when you do that. You're going to have a 5-8 afterwards and then really nothing what much after that. Do? Time waits for no one. I must safeguard the land. Also, he's going for phase then, or killing the Belcher? Oh, he certainly is going. If this is his plane play, he's certainly going for phase. He just wants pressure out. Well, if... Um, I mean, Life Coach is forced, survives, he's very, it. very forced to respond to this board position. It's, it's getting really close to combo. Tank has so much burst in his hand with double Druid of the Claw, combo, even so Keeper. 
possibility. Yeah, this is a situation I think life coach is going to sniff out. Um, you know, when Tang, Tang plays pretty much straightforward, is what I've noticed. When he makes a play like this, it's he's really kind of telling you that he's getting close to killing you. I think life coach really is going to sense that. All right, so here he is uh, playing oh. Twilight again, getting a ton up. Seems nice. And he has a good use for those Mora cards. Yeah, this is going to keep him out of range. Oh, is cool. Yeah, this is pretty much... I mean, I think this is probably the best scenario he could have gotten himself into. You got to utilize both Mortal Coils, which were otherwise very much stuck in his hand in this matchup. Gets Emperor down, which is a big threat to Tang. Now Tang draws his own Emperor. Emperor, Emperor can really make the next turns awkward for Life Coach. If all those cards are cheaper, suddenly you maybe get, like, such burst that's really easy to yeah the problem with this is that this is one of those turns where it might it might feel like it's like the last one where he can sneak in this damage underneath taunts i mean he's got to be worried about taunts after this next turn so it's a it, i think at this point he's gonna have to look towards fighting a grinding battle what about just uh innervate combo face um well <laughs> <laughs> we see it's the best play oh yeah totally <laughs> um I think at this point he's still capable of fighting a grind, even though he may not want to, because all that has to happen while he's fighting the grind is he has to end one turn with initiative, or he has to go into one of his turns with initiative, and then he has combo to kill it. Imagine if Tori Sun would actually be a swipe. Well, I mean, he will certainly be combo's face then. Yeah. I mean, he'd, probably, he'd probably have to go. I don't, I, that's still not even necessarily the case, though. I mean, even if this Tori Sun was a swipe. If he's gonna, if he's gonna ever play the face game, Right now, it's got to be charged two druid of the claws, which is not reasonable. Again, this deck, this deck took a, such a shift away from that when, when uh, everything became such these, you know, you came capable of fighting these big heavy grinds because of cards like Doctor Who and Emperor Thorson that you just don't need to play that way anymore. So yeah, double double Torison on board. Both got the power from the power of Ragnaros. So much power. He taps. I've got the beast still Yeah, he's playing big game on an anti-kill bot. So still out of range. All these truths of the claw, but still pressure for Tang. Oh man. Actually, you know, if he if, let's say if he makes two T2s, that's that's game, he just hellfires, right? Yeah. Then with Zombie Chow, it's plus two, he gets the eleven. And uh, that's four, eight, eleven, yeah. So he needs to hero power, and then he's alive on one. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> so actually, oh, well, you know, he just shadow flames then. That's so crazy. Yeah, this game, it's it's he's he's gonna have to taunt Druid to the Claw if he wants to live here. If he shadow flames, but if he happens? if he taunts Druid to the Claws though, I think he's really giving up a lot of win condition. Six. Yeah. Well, Druid of the Claw into Zombie Chow. I don't, I don't mind Pilot Shutter in like one Druid of the Claw, but I think he really needs to have access to a charge to be able to win this game. Well, he's a, he still has one more Force of Nature, possibly, in his deck. We've seen one. He might be running two. I don't mind charging into the Zombie Chow, actually. That's, I think that's totally reasonable. Yeah, we're getting a cat that has to be traded in, and you get back to... 15 with the hero power. Done. It's not like Handlock is going to rush you. No, I mean, still putting pressure on. This game is... It's one off, by the ah, way. This game has been so crazy. It's 14 points of damage, right? 5, 7, 10, 14 points of damage. Life Coach is one damage off lethal. Get this game. You got Iron Beak. That might be important to be able to deal with the, sludge, uh, the pilot shredder. Well, I don't be out and let's say Shadow Flame. And then you go for face with everything else. You're still outside of the combo range. Because you have sixteen, not fourteen. It's it's a really tough spot to be in. So somebody suggested that um Dritz should start playing Stontusk Boar. Because with Stontusk Boar, if you have a combo, you actually deal seventeen. The problem is then you have a Stone Tusk Boar in your deck. Well, yeah, <laughs> but I will remind you that the world champion Firebot did play it in a rogue, rogue deck. Yeah, he, he he lost that game, I believe. Yeah, because he didn't attack with the Santos board. What was his record? What was his record that tournament? 
<laughs> it's pretty good. He, he wasn't the last one. I have no time for games. Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of like this. Just, just go for it. Steal whatever this remaining minion is. Oh, oh I think that was wait. not terrible. It's not lethal because it doesn't go yeah. in between. <laughs> Wow, if the Flame Dunk Totem position was in between all the minions, he actually <laughs> would have won the so game. That'd be so sick. Oh! Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's only 13 damage. Oh, man, so close. There's a Hellfire going to seal this game. Yeah. Tying getting really close to killing Wow, Lefkoe. really well played game, I think, by both of these guys, honestly. Definitely. Like, Tang was really hunting for, hunting for lethal for, you know, the last few turns or so, and Life Coach was just every single time able to kind of fortify his position against that happening. I just love how Torison shaped the game. Like, after both players played Torison, it, it was a different Hearthstone that we knew before BRM. Yeah, I mean, 100% <laughs> was. Like, you just... Torison is one of those cards you just... You can't emulate its ability, really. It's very, very unique. And at times, while it certainly can seem very broken, I think the card, all in all, is very good because... If the strategies that are effective against Thorison typically are strategies that don't allow Thorison to be very active in the game. And that's, that creates diversity. I also want to give another shout out to the Thorison because it's like a really digital card. Like in the normal physical card game, playing this card would be really annoying. Oh my gosh, it'd be impossible. You have to yeah. note which cards you had in hand. You basically have to reveal the hand to your opponent. You have to keep your cards separate. Yeah. It'd be awful. All right, so Life Coach is going to take game number three and get a lead against Tang. Tang is not out yet. Life Coach is not through yet as well. Yeah, 2-1 lead here. He's got one deck left to win with. And that deck is Paladin. Yep. It's pretty tough stuff here. Oh, man, pretty exciting last match. I love it. I love it. I really enjoy it. Yeah, Tang gonna have to either win with Paladin or with Druid, and this is again sort of the matchup I think that he wanted to avoid was Paladin versus Paladin um, as like a single final game. I think it's fine, really. Like uh, I think Tang has an edge with uh, the more aggressive approach, so it, it will definitely um, depend on the draws yeah. at the beginning. I would say so. But if he gets um, all the cards he has, which are aggressive, and Life Coach gets a clunky hand where his deck is more stuffed with the clunky cards. The tank has an edge to take that one. And with Paladin win, it will be down to Druid versus Paladin, which is... Who has an advantage of Druid versus Paladin? Um, well, it, I mean, again, it's sort of... It's going to depend on how the decks are built. I mean, you mentioned that uh, Tang is, you know, kind of going with these aggressive routes, and his Druid deck really it seems like it's pretty straightforward and pretty standard. And, uh, you know, Life Coach kind of playing a greedier deck. It's, you know, we're going to have to wait and see what the match is really like, because at the end of the day, I, I think that the... I think the favor is is in Life Coach's corner simply because his decks are geared towards fighting grinds. All right, guys, we're watching Life Coach versus Tying, but for now we're going to for a short commercial break, so don't go anywhere. Yeah, I mean, like you know, like we've been kind of going through this, the uh, two one in favor of Life Coach right now, and uh, I would tend to say he's primed to take this match. Uh, Tang's got Paladin and Druid left, and Life Coach's got Paladin. And his Paladin decks, you know, running stuff like Piloted Sky Golem, really geared at fighting these late game battles, which Paladin and Druid are so often going to tend to do. Even with the more aggressive stance that Tang is, is kind of taking with his Paladin deck, I would still tend to say it's going to go in the late game. And just once again, he's got even got a Kel'Thuzad in his deck. With Piloted Sky Golem, oh, Kel'Thuzad, it's just so much strong end game. I, I have to give the nod to Life Coach in the edge. Well, the, the, as you said, like the only chance that Tang has is to get a very aggressive hand versus Life Coach's clunky hand with Kel'Thuzad, Tyrion, Paladin, Sky Golem, and then he will he, he might be able to steal the Paladin versus Paladin. But even then, he will still have to take his Druid versus the Paladin deck and win that match as well. So how is the Druid versus Paladin again? Well, it really kind of depends on how the Paladin hands really roll out. If Druid gets an aggressive start and is able to kind of fend things off, I think Druid of the Claw is. Is pretty strong in that matchup, honestly. You know, outside of something like Aldor Peacekeeper, it's not really going to be dealt with. And then Emperor Thorson, of course, giving you a dynamic that you really just didn't have before against pretty much every single deck you can imagine. Having the ability to kind of accelerate to a turn seven combo with an extra card, um, especially one that your opponent has to actually answer, it's so much more pressure, I think, uh, coming from the Druid side of the board. But again, you know, it wants to find a grind. We saw it play Emperor last game, and it was still oh, yeah. continuing to try to fight a grind the entire time. 
And so despite the fact that it does have that extra dynamic and an extra way to attack, I would still tend to say it wants to fight a very long game. Oh man, I, I just love Emperor Torison. It's bringing so much fun to Hearthstone. Like BRM was just awesome, amazing with the new cards. Well, what are the most popular cards from BRM we are seeing now? Torison is... Well, obviously Emperor Torison. In Gang Boss. Yep. Are we seeing anything else for now? Um, I think that right now you're not going to see too terribly much stuff. I think the cards are really good, but you uh, you need like the full wing to be released because a lot of the stuff kind of has synergy with each other. Like Volcanic Dragon is really one of those ones that strikes me as once you see it in play, it's going to change the way that people are going to start playing dragon decks. Not only that, but you still have uh, the Blackwing Corruptor to still be yet released, which is the three damage one if you're holding a dragon in your hand. Um, Chromagus does kind of give you an extra late game dragon that maybe you didn't have before because you, you didn't want to necessarily play nine mana ones, you want to play eight mana ones. Yeah. Um, and I actually don't think rend is that bad. I think that a, will, a really well timed rend in some situations can put your opponent in in some really sticky spots, especially like um, even facing out against something like Dr. Boom. If you kill Dr. Boom and get an A4 body and Boom bots fail to kill the rend, your opponent's looking at an eight power body on board, which is not a situation that you really want to be staring at. What about down. the green patterns? Like, we've seen a lot of people run, actually, yeah, the Green Pattern combo. Well. Yeah, I can warrior your deck. Uh, is, very it, strong is, it, is it good? Uh, I think it's very good. It's it's sort of like, um, it's not quite aggro, but it's not quite control. It's a, it's more of like a combo deck that really takes advantage of your opponent getting putting themselves in bad situations. Game four is going to get underway here, though. And it's going to start with Paladin versus Paladin. And something else we kind of forgot to mention in this matchup, which is also really important, is that My little pink bearded sec. guy. On the end of that hand over there. Oh man, I'm already seeing Life Coach having a big advantage here. We we talked about uh, Tang being more aggressive. He got Knife Juggler, Master for Battle, which is amazing. But then if Life Coach just coins out Shield and Minibot turn one, that would be so powerful. Both of these hands are pretty pretty fantastic. Aside from this Iron Beak out, which is, I think is almost certainly going to get pitched. If there will be no Shield and Minibot, I would give it give it advantage to to Tang because he can get Juggler into Master for Battle, but then, oh, Lay on Hands, that's the first, but I'm not even surprised. Those decks have so much light, I just need to blink. I'm blinded. <laughs> oh man, come on, Paladin. We need, we need like a Dark Paladin version, like a Shadow Paladin. I would play the Shadow part. Paladin? Yeah, Shadow Paladin would be cool. Like we, in Warcraft, you have Death Knights, but Death Knight is... Death Knight's a Shadow Paladin. No, it's a Death Knight. Like, you can That's have what a Shadow Paladin is. Yeah, that Death Knight is like, Paladin heals you with the light, right? Death Knight heals you with an axe. So the Shadow Paladin would heal you with darkness, like kill you with darkness. That's what a, dar that's what a Death Knight does. They, they infuse the weapon with, with the powers of evil and attack you with it. Is that darkness? That's the runes that they infuse the weapons with. They, yes, they, they use blood and plague. And, and, and is, the, is there a darkness build? Will they have ice? Oh man, ice, I need, you know, I the, need co the chilling cold of the north. Chilling cold is not darkness. I think I think the cold dark north is is kind of the the idea behind the Death Knight. All right, I need a Death Knight. Class look at the look at the armor of a Death Knight. What color is it? Well, Blood Elf Death Knight has a pink armor, I believe. Pink armor. It starts. With, that's what you're telling me right now. Yeah, because it's a Blood Elf Death Knight. They always were. I wish the, I wish the audience could see the look on your face right now because you're just you're trolling me so hard. <laughs> All right, let's back. Let's get back to that knife juggler for Tang. There is a shield and mini bot. Yo, life coach, why didn't you coin shield and mini bot turn one? Um, I, I actually don't like coining the shield and mini bot here. There was no follow up, was there? Yeah, I, I'd be very in favor of saving the coin. But now it means that mm. Tang will be able to actually sport the uh, Master for Battle. And oh, have he's, got, he's still going to get lucky on it. And even if, if that happens, like, uh, you know, Life Coach can still just, he can either play, uh, my mind is going blank here right now. I'm looking at the card and I can't remember. Mind, control, mind tech. control Tech. Or he can coin Consecrate afterwards. Yep, that's not bad at all. Mm. All right, that makes a lot of sense then. Uh, so even though there is this one of the strongest plays for Tang, Master for Battle into free. It might fail. You can and see Life Coach doing the math on, on Knife Juggler right now. He's already trying to figure out which <laughs> Oh, I actually thought he's waving at us, and I waved back. <laughs> hey, Life Coach. What's up, man? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, come on. He, he still has a Consecration here. Yeah. It's 50-50. I really like Harrison Jones this matchup, especially looking at a weapons with free durability. But like, even if you kill the True Silver Champion... They don't champion. stay three durability for very long. True Silver Champion is really the one you're getting for. Well, Ashbringer is the one I think you're getting for, but... Oh, yeah. True Silver Champion is quite all right. 
Yep, whatever weapon you get is good. Mm. So the if, problem with consecrating here, by the way, is that it's not a very clean turn. At turn four, he won't have a clean. Play. Yeah, you're looking at your opponent potentially playing pilot of shredder, and you'd respond with Eldor Peacekeeper. And then, what's how's turn five look though? What's good news for Life Coach is that Tang doesn't really have pilot of shredder or any good turn four play. I think you just jam the, the mind control attack here and steal the knife juggler. I think that's the right play. I would do it. <laughs> I would just get that juggler. Uh, I, Sometimes you just brawl before you attack with that. Oh, he's actually awesome. going for it. Oh, man, at 21%. Can Life Coach steal the juggler? Oh, and my gosh. Oh, he didn't get it. That's so tense. This does put pressure back on the knife juggler, though. Well, actually, that's a, that's a great consecration turn. That is a pretty darn good. True Silver Champion draw, I'd say, too. Uh, I like the... Tr yeah, True Silver is even better here. You can keep Consecration for a Master of Rival. I was thinking like how to protect uh, the Jaguar. I also really don't mind. You know what? I, I take it back. I don't like the True Silver this turn. What I do like is the Eldor Peacekeeper onto the Mind Control deck. The plays get better and better. <laughs> yeah, I actually... True Silver is still a very good draw because of the way you follow up for this turn. But Eldor Peacekeeper is kind of, you know, playing the role of, of like a, a Shrink Meister here almost where you're just trying to buy tempo. How much do you believe that there is no consecration, seeing no coin consecration on this kind of board? I mean, it's really tough to say. By the way, the mind control tag, I liked it from Life Coach because it, looking at this board, you have a clear chance to get something useful. Like, yeah. you play it and you know you're getting a minion and you can get something amazing. If you just get a 1-1, one, one, you're not that much behind. And later in the game, you might not have a chance to use my control tech. Yeah, the real key to the my control tech was that it gave you a body to contest the knife juggler. Yeah. I really don't like this trade. Why, why is he making that trade? That was just three points, three extra points of damage that he missed. Like, your opponent's going to be able to run into one of your 1-1s, one but is that really that important? I like the damage, so I agree with you here. Yeah, I would tend to favor the damage as well. So do you consecrate now, or is, is there any meaning to married to Sludge Belcher? If you play Sludge Belcher, what happens? Like You're getting wrecked by True Silver. I think Consecrate is just going to be their best here. You're pulling five points power up the board. You're getting rid of Knife Juggler. You're not going to really have too many great looking turns in the future for Consecrate, especially considering that you're going to either want to play something like Emperor or Sludge Belcher in the following turns, and your follow-up after that's going to be, you know, a pretty heavy curve of minions. Like, when are you going to have time to Consecrate? Uh, that's kind of what I'm looking at here. This turn is so weird for Tag. You just, you just outdoor hero power pass because you you need the the, for, the weapon for Sludge Belcher, and you know that Sludge Belcher is going to show up or. Or Azure, well, Azure Drake, nobody plays that. Yeah, I mean, it's a really it's a really awkward turn. I can totally see him playing Lester for battle. He's going for face. Well, you've seen Consecration, you've seen my Country Attack. You will hope that you can deal with it. But then, if there is a Sludge Belcher, what do you do with all those minions? Like, you hope for a Quartermaster top deck? Uh, you know, that's it? Just, so you get, yeah, you know, I mean, sometimes your part's got a Sludge Belcher. There's not really much you can do about it. And why would you keep Aldor? Like, what do you really want to Aldor here? I do, I will admit that I do like his discipline play here of just token and pass. I, th I think it's far superior to playing the Master for battle. I actually agree. Well, I didn't like Master to begin with, but I like not playing Elder as well. Yeah, no real reason to play the Elder or Peacekeeper here. I mean, you're looking for a tempo play. And Elder is really not giving you one. I mean, the extra 3-3, three, three, it's, it's mm. okay, but... Aldor will be amazing on turn 7. Like, if you play Sylvanas on 6, you can play Aldor on 7 with whatever, and then have a good trade with Sylvanas if she survives. Unless we are going to see everything Aldor Peacekeeper, and they are going to attack everyone for one point of damage. One attack. Let me think. Hard pressed to not see Sludge Belcher this turn. I mean, I really like Corn Emperor here. Gosh, I mean, Sludge Belcher just looks so good against this board. Well, if you get a Sludge Belcher, you not only get rid of the weapon, you have a 1-2 follow-up that can trade with the dudes, and you might even protect your Torison. Playing Torison here is giving you better plays for the next turn, but then you're surely going to lose it. Yeah, I mean, I can't blame him for Emperor here. This is <laughs> such a powerful card. Five mana gets a 5-5. Five five. You know, it's forcing out Trues over Champion. It's giving you like a really strong turn six play as well as a strong turn Look seven at this. play. 
five mana, you get a five five, and you get five mana. Because that's literally what happened. Yeah, that's that's reasonable, right? Well, <laughs> that's OP <okay laughs> at this point. <laughs> totally not an over budgeted card. This emperor, uh, one day, is going to own an empire and have a dar small Darth Vader dwarf by his side. I have no time for games. I just want to make a Twitter account of just things that you say that are weird. <laughs> just post everything out there. I just feel dwarfed by this emperor. But don't. <laughs> Nimsh quotes. Hashtag. Well, you can silence Savannas and then like Aldor it if you want to. And then Kenny. Aldor it. Just completely new to Savannas. <laughs> well, she would like, be an Now you're not taking any minions. Now you only have one power. Five is too much. Savannas is just like, dang it, I just, I just wanted to fight minions and steal something. Right? Oh, come on. She turns into an ultimate dude slayer. <laughs> She's going to slay five dudes before she is put down. She can even slay the all. She's a dude slayer, right? Oh, yeah. Do you know that Sylvanas was actually a night elf at some point? Like in World of Warcraft? I did know that. Sylvanas is actually one of the characters that I, I was interested in, read a lot about the lore of. It's just one of the most interesting characters in WoW. Yeah, she's really nice. And um, can you name her sisters? I'm not that into it, but... I know Aleria. Oh, he's going to reduce the Valder and then silence it. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great line of play. Yeah, that's totally what I expected to happen. Oh, come on. I've seen, like, <laughs> Quartermaster Rainforest. I've seen everything. Well, today. anything can happen. I'm, came, I'm trying to forget that for him, and it just seems that everyone wants to bring it up except for me. Even though I, I don't know. I just, like, lot. look at the Rainforest, and uh, I just see the play. All right, so what do you do now? I mean, still tough stuff. No, really, none of these plays are very clean. You just drew Zombie Chow, which is probably one of the worst cards in your deck right now. Yeah, this is going so much in Life Coach's favor. Like, the game goes longer, and the longer the game goes, Life Coach is the more advantage he has. Yeah, I, that's not only, I think, the nature of the builds, but also kind of, you know, what's going on with the draws, too. I, I would tend to say that Life Coach is drawn slightly better than Tang. I mean, not enough, I think, to warrant this kind of an advantage, but... Just enough that I'm just looking for a good consecration here, but I, I can't see it. Yeah, this is a, actually a game where Knife Juggler was kind of a liability, given the way the game panned out. I mean, Life Coach got, just got such a strong consecration. You know, and at what cost? Like, he didn't really take too much damage. Are you going to look into trying to kill your own Savannas, maybe? Because he can't deal with his war right now. Master for battle, I'm not sure about it. Like, with no Quartermaster. Oh, he's just going all in on board. He's seen Consecration, he's seen MC Tech. There's a my Master from Life Coach. Yeah, I mean, this is just looking like another tough spot here. Well, with Master, you can try getting Sylvanas dead and giving him a, a, a minion. Let me think. Just everything in Life Coach's court right now. The only thing he really can't do is play Tyrion. <laughs> it's because he doesn't want the Sylvanas to get out of hand. Oh, yeah, that's for certain. And you want to keep the Owl for, for opposing Tyrion as well. So I think, like, Master is the play. So you do Master for battle, and then you attack. Mm -hmm. you, you, you do it up, and with four dudes, you're being bold and attacking the lady and kill her, and then hope that she actually takes a dude with her. I think really the big goal is just to get Sylvanas dead before you play Tyrion. Yeah, so that's why you play Master of Battle, right? Mm. Like, you look at your board and you, you look at Sylvanas, and Sylvanas might look like, who is the most handsome here? <laughs> <laughs> and it, I like it as well. If there is a Quartermaster, and it seems like there's a Quartermaster play. Yeah, I really like clearing out the uh, tokens before you fight the Zombie Chow in this instance. Equality, Consecration. That's a bad draw right now. Equality? Equality is effectively two damage here if you want to Equality Consecrate. I like... Well, Consecration is great. Like, Sorry, it's three damage. 
But you don't you don't have the equality. You just consecration mm. this. Like you yeah, you, that's a, equality. I think is just a really poor draw in this situation. Overall, yeah, like it doesn't yeah. do anything. But then you just consecrate and kill everything. You are still left with your Sylvanas, and you do it up. Yeah, I mean, you, I think you have to concentrate here. Just again, kind of lamenting the. Dr this has sort of been like this the story for Tang. This match is that he's just in the mid in the, to the late game. He's just really not drawing very well. Well, I mean, considerably below what I would what I would think is average. I would say, oh, he's going to save the zombie child. I mean, he's not really seen much merit in that. Well, he just needs extra stuff on the board to fight. Yeah, I mean, he's fighting. This is obviously a very long card advantage battle that's being fought right now. Yeah, but there's Land Hands. And that's so good for Life Coach. Oh, he coach. can't know that, though. I think it is great for Life Coach, too, but I... Well, still, like, Life Coach can't play Tyrion. Just can't play Tyrion. Yeah, I know. You cannot play Tyrion into a 1-2 Sylvanas. 1-2 Sylvanas locked you. When I look at that 1-2 Sylvanas, it feels like it costs about 3 mana. She's so small and so big at the same time. <laughs> But then Leon Hands is great. And um, well, that's Sylvanas that doing much damage here. Oh, oh man. Oh, geez. That's the, that's the play. I think you play See, this over. This is the it kind of draw that he definitely wants to get. Oh, yeah. I think you play Tyrion here. Tyrion over Boom? Yeah. You've seen Mind Control Tag. You've seen Consecration. Mm. You've seen a lot of dudes. I mean, just how is he getting punished for this? For Tyrion? Yeah. Like, if you play Tyrion, you're getting Aldord or Silenced. Yeah, I think both of those are totally fine. And if you play Boom, even if you, if you get Aldord, you still have the Boom bots. Silence doesn't do anything there. Yeah, I like mm. Tyrion more. All right. So for the light. How many dudes have died this game? I lost count around oh, I, 12. I count. This, is, this is why they made Bolvar, by the way. Isn't so that you can make a really big minion, it's so you can count how many of your tokens died in a single game. <laughs> well, Bolvar can rem remember the dudes. The problem is when he shows up late to the party, it's like, oh, I guess everybody's yeah. dead. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Tyrion, for the light. So, right now, Silent Six of Valence. Oh my god, Silent Six of Valence is so awkward. Like, you can't sign the Sylvanas, you have to sign the Tyrion, but still. That's One, Sylvanas. Two Sylvanas. What do you do with that Sylvanas? Mm. Like, true silver? Like, it's making this situation incredibly awkward. This is one of the most awkward boards in the Pilot Pilot matchup I've seen in my life. And I've seen a lot of awkward stuff in my life in a Pilot Pilot matchup. So, Silence Tyrion. You have to do it, right? Like, you have to deny the weapon. I don't, I don't see it in the play. I mean, are you going to not Silence Tyrion? But then, are you going to true silver Sylvanas and give the owl back? Which I don't think is that big of a deal. It might not be because there's still the zombie show. Like even if you take that, you have to clear out Sylvanas before you can play Tyrion, and you've wanted to play Tyrion for what feels like about 63 turns in a row now. Let you might actually even play Aldor. Quickly. Like Sylvanas uh, dead to, to the weapon, and then Aldor Tyrion if you want to mitigate some damage. But then you're not really threatened by. Like, you're going to take 8, and Zombie Chow is not going anywhere. Alright, so the Owl is going to change sides. Traitor Owl. That's one treacherous Owl, yeah. It's always Owls, man. Don't trust Owls. So to the moral. So the lady went for the bird. <laughs> and now the Aldor. Well, Dr. Boom is good. It, it is green. <laughs> so... But you have 10 mana, you don't have 7. That means you have to think about it. Yeah, well, well it's still green. It's like, you know. Let me think. And you have that Tyrion. I really want Deathwing to be in one of these decks. I know it's not going to be in there, but I really want it to be. Deathwing. I remember the times when Reynard played Deathwing in a Warrior deck. I think it was like half a year ago. Do you remember, do you remember when I beat Puffin in that match? Can I, I just play Deathwing and discard like six cards. It was like one year ago. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I discard like Ysera and, and Lay on Hands. I discard so much stuff. I just need to see more Deathwing. <laughs> we might see Deathwing in dra Dragon decks. We I might. Oh, yeah. Dragon Consort turn eight Deathwing is not, not too shabby. 
Yeah. It's definitely, definitely a reasonable possibility. Pretty overpowering board. Two equalities in a row Not for life coach. That is so bad. Not really able to do anything here. Like, that Sylvanas got so much value. Single Sylvanas really changed how this game worked for life coach mm. and tang i suppose the plus side of things is that paladin doesn't have a ton of burst so he's still got a little bit of time to find the cards he needs but you know not all the well, time in the world also with the zombie chow well the most important card is dr boom so he might actually go mm. is there any right in, in equality killing dr boom and then playing three Yes, but it's a lot of life to pay. Yeah, but then like you have to deal with, with Dr. Boom, and he is going to attack you eventually. Tyrion can just die to bombs. You might also think about Iron Bial. I think I like getting rid of the Boom right now. He's going for some show. He might still be equality this turn. He's definitely not. Yeah, I think this is enough. It's just, you know, it's a significant threat to your opponent's core position. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh man, that, that's, that's the bird. And if you silence Tyrion, you're basically killing two birds with one bird. <laughs> because you deal with the weapon and with the... It's supposed to be with one stone, right? Yeah. yeah, but it's a bird. Killing two stones with one bird. The life coach in yeah, distress. It's a blow right now. The funnest thing is that he still has Kelfuzad in his deck, and when his board is empty and he gets Kelfuzad, he will not be happy. Yeah. Right. This is a weird one, two Savannah's, one, six Tyrion. Both Tyrions have been sent. Two, one, six Tyrions. <laughs> I told this you is this is a weird game. This game is really weird. And now it pays off that he didn't play equality early. Like he's still trying to get a second yeah. consecration here, I guess. It's going to continue to grind out the game, too. I mean, Tang is at a pretty significant advantage. Yeah, how do we come back from this? Like, was there Dr. Boom? Still has Dr. Boom, I guess. I actually really don't like the uh, the Boom Bot attack. I think you should be using the 1-1 the one -one dude instead of the Boom Bot. I think the Boom Bot puts a little bit more pressure on your opponent's ability to there is this really fight through this. Back-to-back -back equality draws, I think, is really the story of this game. I mean, we talked about how Tang was drawing poorly in the late game. But life coach, you know, in those two turns, he basically drew as poorly as he possibly could. Yeah, I, I can definitely agree with that. I wonder. Do you not play a minion and lock tying with seven minions so that he can't play anything from his hand? <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you. You have a full board and I'm not doing anything. We've seen that before in uh, Zozo versus Kroba. Zozo just insta told him up, and then he was stuck with Dr. Boom, Neptulon in his hand, and he couldn't play them. <laughs> yeah, but this uh, advantage of, is overwhelming. And I really liked killing the Boom before. Well, you just YOLO play to max and pass, and you hope for a Doomsayer. Yeah, again, you're facing a lot of power on board, but it's not. Yeah, Paladin's just not going to have a bunch of burst. So if he manages to get a favorable attack through this turn, he actually might, he can still win this game. Maybe Tang will feel powerful and just go face with everything, and then Life Coach is just going to top deck through Silver Weapon and win next turn. There are no taunts. Yeah, that's really true, actually. You just have to think about how the <laughs> Silver Champion is 14 points of damage. Yeah, that's spot on. That's why Tang has to trade somehow. I would start with a Boomba. I feel like I'm trying to look at what are the worst trades possible. Oh, can I help you? I guess you still do this. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for the worst trades possible is actually kind of fun. So like if he had to ram the 3-3 three, three Peacekeeper into the 6-4 Pilot at Sky Golem and then run Dr. Boom into that same Pilot at Sky Golem. <laughs> <laughs> that would be bad. Well, but it's looking good for now. I think he still needs to attack phase with his Dr. Boom. Like, he needs to start doing damage. If there is a Consecration top deck, this board is getting wrecked. 
All right, the bomb is getting hit. Jeez, for free. Reporting for duty. I'm really surprised he's actually not drawing cards off of his opponent's uh, off of his opponent's Jeeves. Well, it locked the game. Doctor Boom is not it, and uh, there is enough damage to finish it. So Tang is going to win the mirror. Well, Life Coach is going to hope he just doesn't see it. Yeah, he might have been in the habit of of, of trading. Yeah. Six set. Whoa, this. Now he sees uh, it instantaneously. That's <laughs> too much damage. Yeah, game five. Gonna get underway here. What's the last minion to kill the Tyrion. Oh yeah, the Tyrion with the light. Little baby one three Tyrion. It's similar to Sylvanas. So small and so big at the same time. Finishing the game. The last day that Tyrion. Oh man. All right. Yeah. So uh, Paladin got. I think he got a matchup out of the way that I tend with. Well, I would tend to think that he's not his favorite in. And um, really, the back-to-back -back equality draws from Life Coach putting a big hurt on him here. So Druid versus Paladin. It's going to be game five. Druid for Tang and Paladin for Life Coach. I really wonder what route is Life Coach going to take with this deck. I think more controlly because, like, normally if you have a balanced Paladin deck with one equality Defender Vargas, you can try being really fast and uh, just rush the Druid, make risky plays like playing Master for Battle into the board that can be swiped, but if there's no swipe, you're getting a lot of advantage. And then getting a True Silver Champion can help you to go for Druid of a Claw, and you can just rush the Druid. But then again, Life Coach's deck is different. Like, for him, it's more about survival and getting big equality turns. Yeah, I, I would tend to say that getting to pilot a Sky Golem on a safe board is really a big goal of his. Um, so I don't see rushing really being his cup of tea this game. But, uh, you know, True Silver Champion's still going to play a really big role in that. Eldar Peacekeeper, obviously. One of his key cards. I th the question is really going to be how much aggression can Tang start the game with. And if I think if he doesn't get aggression going very early, you're going to see this game be maybe a little bit tough for him. But at the same token, if he's fighting a really big grinding game and it gets sort of towards the late game and he's got stuff like Cenarius, you know, say he's gotten out Consecrates a little bit early, um, he's able to utilize Emperor Thoris on the right way. I mean, he could put together some really big bursts too. At the end. I mean, we saw last game, I'm sorry, the game before this last one, he was able to play Drew the Claw and Force Nature and Savage Roar on the same turn. And that's the same possibility he has in this game. It could, I mean, this could really be a big fight happening. Also, I forgot to mention Black Knight and how yep, important, important of a card important. that is versus something like Sludge Belcher. All right, guys, this is the moment. This is the game. Game number five, Tying versus Life Coach. The winner is advancing to the top eight. The loser is going to go home. Who is going to win this? Black Knight Keeper, Shade. There's no Y Grove, but still for Tang, that's a decent, decent start, I'd say. For Life Coach, well, no aggro here. Yeah, I think a big question is, you know, are you going to keep the swipe in your hand every tank? I think did you have to. Whoa, did he mulligan everything? Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with mulliganing everything, too, looking for better stuff, but it looked to me like it was... I think he kept everything, it actually. It looked to me like it was kept. Or keeped. keeped. It looked to me like it was kept. It's been a long day, man. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely keep swipe. Like, especially if you have Shade of Nexramus, you can keep swipe because you do play the minion on, on free, and then if there is a master risky play, you do swipe it. Yeah, so we're going to get into uh, our board hand here and all these mulligan stages. Oh, Shield of Mini Belt. That is important. So it's, har it's Hearthstoneception right now. Second swipe. It's the game within the game. Oh, wait. He did throw it away. Yeah. But he got it back. And there is Torison on turn three. Yeah, that's uh, that's a spicy one. Even with equality into Torison. Getting those cards cheaper. And he's also getting one more card. One more card will be cheaper unless he's innervate. I wonder if he's ever playing big game on her here. This um, hand is terrible, by the way. Two first, qualities. Yeah. Well, th those three qualities really like life coach, and that's why most of the players play only one. But I, I, I do understand double equality. It's like a more greedy version of a, a control paladin, let's say. Hmm. I think he's gonna play big game on her here. I will opt for um, do it up because you know you are facing, you're possibly facing. Um, Dr. Boom and, and Ragnaros. But on the other hand, you want to get aggressive and you do have a nice curve, like Pilot the Shredder to Sludge Belcher. I wonder. The problem is, if you play Big Game Hunter, I your opponent can just coin Keeper of the Grove. Good call. So Life Coach is going aggro. He's going all in with this. Well, Emperor Thorson's going to be a tough one to deal with. 
Hunter. Yeah. Three. We'll have to trade both minions into it. Or like use Equoi and then trade one, but then it's so weird. And if you if you use equality. What to do? It's so bad, like <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking at this story so now. In my like I'm already in life coach's turn and I'm like he can't like he has to trade both minions into it and play Pilot and Shredder, and I think that's the best play. And Tori son. Tori kun. Tori sama taking control over this game. <laughs> the power of Ragnaros. He's got more names than any emperor has ever lived. Oh man. This is Dwarf Wars. He's got more names than Ricky Tiki Tempo. <laughs> that's how his <laughs> wife is calling him. You know who 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 his wife is? Like you. Yeah, she said if, yeah. if you if you uh, if you kill his wife in Blackrock Mountain, he deals you thirty damage with his hero power. That's yeah. who his wife is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. I will deal thirty damage as well if you kill my wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, his wife is is Moira. He's Only like, thirty. So if someone's got like twenty six armor, they're good for a turn. Oh man, for a turn. <laughs> But yeah, like a daughter of Magni, the the king over the mountain. Right now she's the queen of dwarves, I believe. And they actually have a child. Yeah, pilot shredder, you just lost your minions. Second innervate. I feel like Emperor Thorson's child is just innervate. That's what I feel like. <laughs> yeah. Possibly. Oh Wildgrove. <laughs> it is kinda like Wildgrove. It was again five mana, right? Like yeah, five mana gained from Emperor. Hmm, I wonder. Malfurion wonders. So do you just slam as a Drake? Or is there anything better? Well, I, I mean I don't I, I'm not thrilled about you know jamming Azure Drake into a pilot <laughs> by any means, but if you got a better play, I'd like to hear it. Hmm. Well, you can uh interview Sylvanas. That sounds great. Yeah, Coin Sylvanas here. That seems like an excellent set of play. You're going forward here. I think you just added Drake. You're going to deal with the pilot shutter one way or another. Intervate Sylvanas is really wasteful. Even though I like um, contesting the board, and especially because Shredder will trigger first. So you're getting a minion. Oh, Harrison Jones now. So there was one Harrison in Life Coach's deck. Never showed up when he was needed. What's the minion from Shredder? It's a burr. That's barely good. <laughs> it's barely good. I see what you did there. Because it's a druid card. <laughs> and, be, and because druid cards aren't very good against other druid cards. <laughs> and it's not, a not because it's a bear. <laughs> it's, a, it's a mech. You were not making a pun so based it's, on... It's barely mech. <laughs> I wonder. Well, it doesn't do much for life coach, so... Do you play Harrison to have a five? Attack minion to contest whatever is getting played, or do you try? I think so. I think I think five five power is just better than three. Knowing that there is a blackness somewhere, when do you play your taunt? Mm. I, I don't think you can really play around black knight. Honestly, I don't think it's really going to be even a concern in his mind. I like Harrison because if there's innervate ancient of war, you can deal with that That's easily, and it's not like you're going to use Harrison anyway. Tank just jams Blink Trial this turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. All right. Um, All these plays look very good to me. I'm, I'm just thinking like, do you really want to play Sylvanas here? No, I don't think so. Uh, yeah. If you're, if you're gonna play Sylvanas, you might as well just swipe into Hero Power. Yeah, I just love to swipe Hero Power. I don't. Then, why? I really like Shade Hero Power Wild Growth. And then you don't have to hero power the next turn, so you have three mana swipe. And then because you went into your eight mana, you have three mana swipe. And then, uh, no, I'm sorry, so you go into seven mana, you have three mana swipe, and uh, you know potentially whatever you draw on the turn after that too. It's like how much do you value swipe in this matchup? And what I'm am I saying? Wild growth costs one mana, not zero. I'm looking at the innervate cost and like literally. Oh be yeah, like, yeah. Well, he's got innervate, so you can play anything in his hand. How okay, careful is that? Ignore me, I lied to you guys. Some Well, he's getting low, but then again, Pilot doesn't have much burst. 
only the True Silvers. And considering True Silver as a burst card is actually pretty, pretty weak. <laughs> four mana, four damage, man. That's solid. That's like Wolf Rider. It's, it's like eight, actually. That's a Wolf Rider style value. One mana per one damage. It also heals you. The most important part of dealing burst. Yeah, it's not a bad deal. <laughs> so do you continue with the swipe now? You swipe Harrison Jones. I don't think so. I think at this point you can justify Savatis. But that's so much damage coming. I mean, definitely is. Even Savannah's on this board is still there. Still like Lothab or Savannah's. I don't really have a problem with either one. Yeah, swipe and Savannah's is nice. I will. I will think I will go. Turn seven, with the spells. Time waits for no one. I think I will keep Sylvanas for something bigger. Especially knowing what Lifeboat is playing in his deck. I mean, it'd be really nice to have Sylvanas for something like Tyrion. Yeah, or across that even. So I like Lothab. Either though, like Lothab on turn seven is awkward because you would like to have Lothab on eight so that they can't cast their hands. But then again, you stop the consecration equality. All right, so turn seven. Do you stop equality here? I actually think this is a, a pretty darn good turn to equality. Yeah, it's not bad. But then um, Shadow and Sram mm. is going to have two health after that. No, no, no. You equality, you play the knife juggler, and then start running the minions in. No, no, you can't. Oh, you can't. Seven. It's seven mana. <laughs> yeah. You just load that. What am I thinking of? You're just tired. Yeah, I think I'm just. It's been, I guess, a really long day. It's only been about 12 hours. Surprisingly, Tang is actually dropping low. 15 points of health, already half. And that Kel'Fuzad, he needs to clear now. If he doesn't clear, Kel'Fuzad might be amazing. Well, it's pretty tough to clear in this board position. I mean, he really only has the Wrath. He can kill about half this board. Do you, do you actually hmm. Savage Roar? How important it is for you to start? Well, he can also play Savannah's. If well, Savage Roar doesn't really do anything here. Just two points of damage. It's basically the same thing as Wrath. Yeah, I like Wrath Savannah's. Because you are expecting Tyrion on eight. Hmm. Uh, actually, I think I would prefer uh, Pilot Shredder. Because it's not sure that Tyrion is getting dropped. And uh, with equality consecration, you are going to lose your Savannah's. So I would keep it at, um, till the time that something is actually on board. But, oh, Savannah is going to die to equalities anyway. I for no so I was thinking about Savitar because you attack the 3-4 with 5-5 five, five, and then no time for games. you wrath the 3-2. Three, no, you wrath the 3-3. Three, three. You kill the 1-2 with the Shade of Extramus and then Savage Roar, Juggler. No, it doesn't work as well. Yeah, using wrath is superior. And Almost every instance. I actually don't mind not attacking here either. But seven points of damage coming. Oh, there's a consecration. Well, more importantly, there's also a Kel'Thuzad. Yeah, but there's Savannah as well. So what about like dude up equality consecration? Like attack with everything, dude up equality mm. consecration, and then give back something insignificant. I kind of just like running both of your minions, like running a 3-3 and running the 3-4 into Sylvanas. And then it steals either the Sludge or it steals the dude, and then you play Kel'Thuzad. And you get back your 3-5 Sludge Belcher and your 3-3. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, pretty decent I think as well. I think it's about the most value you're possibly going to get out of Kel'Thuzad this game. Yeah, you deal with Sylvanas, and then you have the Kel'Thuzad, you get yeah. the Belcher and if back. And if he steals the 1-1, one -one, your opponent's going to be in really bad shape. If he steals the 1-2, it doesn't matter that much as well. And then he has to kill the... Well, we see that now, but there is no way to deal with the Kel'Thuzad because he will have to go for Belcher again. Oh, so he attacks and... Uh, oh, he goes for face with everything. And uh, equality consecration then. But I really like your play, like getting the Kel'Thuzad into the Sylvanas empty board. Uh, I mean, this is totally reasonable too. I mean, he's clearing out his opponent's entire board. There's a 50% chance that he steals a very physical board very much. So what is Lady into? The guy with the pink beard. Yeah, I mean, it's just still not worth very much. Two Savage or I mean, this hand is really awful from Tang 2. I mean, this again continues to be the story of him just, you know, 
know, he, he has a turn where it's really key for him to basically just draw anything of, of, uh, of merit, and he's failed to do so. On the other hand, um, he will be able to clear the Belcher. Mm. He has to clear the Belcher here and uh, just play Shredder. And Shredder will not be contested by two dudes. So like you shapeshift. Wait, he has actually at six health. Oh my god, this is so low. Yeah, I mean that's really the issue with the with the way this panned out. I wonder. I mean that's one of the reasons why Life Coach chose to take this line too, is because it's just more aggressive. Alright, Shredder Shapeshift, and then True Silver Champion is sealing the game. Time waits for no one. Savage to kill the one too. Is it like is this a play against the result? I think it's a play of just trying to buy himself as much time as he possibly can. What does it accomplish, really? Long term, you know, if he has the hero power. Oh my gosh. Sky that is such a strong one draw right now. Well, I don't think it mattered too terribly much, though. I mean, Tank just, he's just falling far behind. Yeah, it's not what. He doesn't have a way to clear. He doesn't have a way to win the game from here. Ancient of Lore might be nice, but. First, I guess you have to attack it as a 6-4. To see the Doomsayer. Doomsayer right, would right. be so weird right now. You attack. It's so awesome at the same time. You attack your pilot shredder into a 6-4. Yes. Your you opponent get a gets, a f uh, gets a pilot shredder. You play Ancient Allure and you draw two cards. You get Wrath. You Wrath your opponent's pilot shredder. They spawned off a pilot at Sky Golem. And then they get Doomsayer. Oh, man, two minions. All right, well, there goes that dream. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's almost lethal. <laughs> Five attack, it's eight. That is definitely lethal right now. He has to heal with the Ancient Lore. And at this, once he has to heal with the Ancient Lore, now the game's over because he doesn't have any gas left. I mean, the, the grind has just been successfully completed. By and with Kelfazad, he can actually clear this board and get the board back. And there's no way for Druid to actually clear it. Well, now he can't kill that. Board. But still, the 10 points of damage, he's nowhere, nowhere near dying. I like just KT, just slam KT. 5-4 into 5-5. Five, five. Attack for two. Get the pound the back. Yeah, I mean the grind again, the grind has been successfully completed here. Yep. Life coach. A life coach grinding his opponent down. Hmm. What a cool way to win with Kelfazad. Such a great card. It's a really big shutout. They should buff him too. They should buff Kelfazad to seven attack. I don't think it's a buff. Same as a jerk. This is like the fourth <laughs> time you trolled me, and you know that I'm tired. You know that I can't catch your your subtle sarcasm. Gotcha. <laughs> Got one. Still, a life coach on his way to advance to the top eight and tying on his way to elimination. Health for that is getting dropped. Reviving those pandas. The pandemonium is upon us. Every time I look at Kelfazad, like he's. I look at that picture and it looks like he's like a Fu Manchu to me. Oh man, he actually got a swipe. That's the only card that could save him if there will be no Kelfazad on board. It just looks like a mustache. I can't I can't help but look at that Kelfazad and see a mustache. A <laughs> mustache? Yeah, I just can't. Do you see it? Uh, well, not really. I think those are his eyes. Maybe he has, has like fake mustache. <laughs> and you should never I just, I explain can't a fake it. mustache. Oh, he gets a Keeper. He actually can survive for one turn, I believe. Because he sinuses Kel'Thuzad and swipes the 5-4. He can kill Kel'Thuzad here, by the way. But then you're dead? No, you're not dead. Oh, you're not dead because it's yeah. five. Oh, wow. Actually, it's good. Excess mana, that's a, that's a bug, by the way. Excess mana is not his hand that's been spent. <laughs> Cleared, and yeah. a true silver weapon is going to finish it. Why is going to draw it first? It's going to be pilot Master shooter. For battle. For battle. Oh he my god! He needs a third swipe. <laughs> <laughs> he needs an ancient of war. Is what he needs. Ah, oh, that wouldn't even work. Ancient of war. He's got a quality. Life coach has got everything, man. What does he need? He needs. He needs Alex Strauss himself. Life coach is prepared. Yeah, Shane X Strauss isn't going to do it. All right. Well, that's going to be it. Life coach is going to take this series three games to two. What a grindy game. I have this to give good. it to Tang, man. Like, Tang played really well. He got Life Coach on the rope. Well, Life Coach got himself on the rope, like, every turn. But then Tang really got Life Coach well to this tight spot, the fifth game. Yeah. 
So Life Coach is going to advance to the top eight and join the rest of our great players. Uh, shout out to Tying. Well played, but unfortunately he has to. Yeah, man, really great stuff here from Life Coach. Again, showcasing just how strong of a deck builder he is and, and understanding of his matchups. You know, playing decks that are pretty unconventional, I think, in terms of uh, you know, general conquest strategy right now, but really getting the job done, again, just with his understanding and very, very strong play throughout the entire course of the game. You know, the games where he has to play cards inefficiently in order to get to the later stages of the game where he can finally play these big mana cards that are carrying him through so many games, that's like that's something that's hard to do for a lot of players. Like, it's difficult to just play three mana three threes and, you know, have this mind control tech in your hand and be like, you know what, I don't need to steal a mini with this ever. I just need a three three on the board to kind of fight. He's so patient and he's so skilled with his decks. Like, we are getting tired here. And he was playing under the stress, those difficult decks with so many decisions. And he made correct decisions till the end, till the last turn when he took the series. I'm really amazed by his play and uh, by all the, the games we had today. We had an amazing day. Yeah, I mean, it's been great today so far. And we have plenty more Hearthstone to come. And so to wrap up the day for you guys, we're going to throw it over to Frodan and some of the guys at the analyst desk. And uh, they're going to take it away for you. Well, that wraps up the night, and uh, the entire series finally finished. Life Coach advances 3-2. Lothar, you looked you looked famished, first of all, but you also looked a little bit relieved. Yeah, both. I'm exhausted and happy that Life Coach advanced. It was really a nail-biter. And uh, I think Tang could have easily won the game, the last game, the deciding game, uh, when uh, if he would just use the Innervate Wild Grove on turn... Four, I think, with Sylvanas and Wildgrove at the same in the same turn, but he didn't opt to do it, and from that point, he just was piling his mistakes. Sure, let's let's actually t look, talk a little bit about uh, some of the stuff that we saw. So, Caldi, you said there was a play that specifically stuck out to you. Is it the Innervate play that you were talking about with? Lothar? Yeah, it, it was after the Thorazan, I suppose. You could go for the you have to get Innervate. You could go for Sylvanas, and uh, on the board, there's only a part of the sweater, so. You can't really trade into it, you know, without, and you can't really play a minion onto the board. You get a Violet Growth. And that Violet Growth actually popped up like a turn four. You could play for one mana on turn five. Yeah. So having like one extra mana all of these extra turns, it sat in the hand for four or five turns there. And like, he played an Azure Drake instead, and he could have played, uh, so uh, Sylvanas, Innovate, Violet Growth, uh, which would have cost six mana because of the Emperor Thoris Sun. Then he could go for on. Uh, after that, he can go for Asher Drake and Swipe afterwards with the combo. And I mean, uh, Sylvanas Valkroth into Asher Drake Swipe is so much stronger than uh, I think it was Asher Drake only. And yeah. then right. after and then that, he traded into yeah. the Shredder and then Directly he lost the to board. The shredder. Yeah. yeah, I think it was like I think he went for like Shade and Hero Power the turn after or something like that. If I believe mm -hmm. right, into mm -hmm. the Swipe. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it would be devastating if he gone for that line play. True. Well, uh, and then it ended up. Well, first of all, it got to this point because. Uh, it was very back and forth, and there were moments where maybe Life Coach, like he first had the Druid beat the Mage. That was really big. And then at that point, we were talking about how Life Coach just seemed to be outplaying Tang a lot. Yeah, th there was one one mistake uh, when Life Coach played. Oh, exactly, this moment. He could have just ignored the Antonidas mm -hmm. and go with face with everything. There was no point, of, in my opinion, of trading for the Antonidas when you when every single top deck is basically winning the game anyway, right? Because if you trade, you get five points of damage to the, to, to the face, you're on two. So Fireball, Frost Ball is lethal anyway, even if there's Antonidas on board. And um, you're basically guaranteed lethal. Only things that can happen and and go badly for, for Life Coach here is a Clockwork Gnome top deck or Mirror Entity top deck. And I'm not sure if there's even a Mirror Entity left. Yeah, I think there was no Mirror Entity, yeah. Yeah, but like, there was one Clockwork Net non pay at least, so... Uh, was there a Frostbolt remaining as well? I don't, I that, mean, that, there's so, no yeah. difference. Right, but I'm just... Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, you dead that anyway, I suppose. You dead anyway to a Frostbolt, if the Antenna just lives or not. In this situation, sure. uh, he would have been at 16 health there, which would have been easy lethal, I suppose, so... Uh, yeah, it would have been a huge swing. I think, though, in, in general in the series, most of the matchups were actually favored for Tang, but he either had really bad draws or missed plays. So uh, he did, all, of course, take two games, but definitely props to him for that. I mean, Life Coach is an excellent player, one of the best in the world. And really give props to Life Coach. I mean, he's been playing so many games, and like barely, I think it's like 99% of the plays he's played are correct. So he's been ridiculously consistent in this yeah. event. Yeah, also, and 
when he plays every single game it's like pushing himself to the limits mm -hmm. so playing so much so much intense games has to be you know punishing him uh, his um his stamina, right? Mm -hmm. Stamina. For Maybe sure. from poker, I guess, because those long, uh, quite long hours and grueling, you know, grinding through that, I guess, in professional poker. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. Well, he made it, and uh, he did eliminate Tang, which means he goes in second place in the group. A long time ago, earlier today, I once was told that in history, Rain had won this group, but I don't know, man. <laughs> Maybe I'll, my, my, my grandfathers can tell me about that story, because it was a really long time ago. Well, <laughs> once he won the tournament, you know. Battle really? of the best. Oh, well, that's even more interesting. Thank you so much for <laughs> exploring that historical path to Lothar. Let's take a look at the groups and talk a little bit about what happened today. Uh, we, in Group A, we also we had Firebat advance uh, through the winner's bracket to start off today. He had a match against Zosis. Uh, yeah. In second place, Zosis did manage to advance over Kroba and was able to get second place, even though one player was uh, not able to show up for his tournament. It was the other way around. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, Kro uh, Kroba, Kroba did, was did able that to last advance. one. Yeah. Right. Uh, but, uh, sorry about that. Definitely an upset there in, in Group A. Uh, so Kroba and Firebird will be playing tomorrow in mm -hmm. the round of eight. But they're not playing against each other because they advanced no. from yeah. the same No, you have group, to right? play another yep. first or second place C. We'll, we'll look at the bracket, too, before we go out today. Let's take a look at Group B. Uh, you can see that Faramir did end up losing to Airbrush in the final match of the day, which means that Airbrushed and RDU will be going through in the top two. And RDU has to be feeling lucky today. Feeling really good, feeling good. And Group C, you just saw Life Coach managed to squeak out past Tang to go into the second place. Raynad, of course, taking that first place spot, which people, you know, they always say that, you know, you shouldn't underestimate a guy like Raynad, but then when he comes out 2-0 and advances from this group, you, you know well what? Done. You know what? Raynad is, was always playing some really questionable decks in the past. In the past, but this and time around he brought This the time decks. he brought solid decks, Face Hunter, Freeze Mage, and uh, what was the third? Uh, Zoo. Zoo. Zoo, Zoo. Yeah. And he actually won two games. I mean, two matches. Ha! <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. Yeah, it takes away a little bit of the gimmicks, trying to like do something really unique. No aggro rogue, for example, with Cold Bloods. And, and the um, and Dancing uh, Swords. Yeah. Dancing Swords, that's right. Yeah. By the way, one thing I want to say about Airbrush to qualify it also, uh, he's on Team Darkstar with uh, players like Orange and Freak that have been doing insanely well recently and uh, quite a dominant player. I remember him from like early beta and he's been doing well ever since. He hasn't been, I guess, performing as frequently recently. He's not been a lot of tournaments, but definitely a guy to look out for tomorrow. That's All right, true. well, in Group D, we had uh, also a three-man group where Powder was able to advance in first place uh, over Orange, and then Dutch Boy did also get the second-place spot. So well done overall to, to these guys who are able to advance top two in their group, which means our top eight is going to be a pretty good one, in my opinion. We're going to have a bunch of the first seeds match up against the second seed. You saw that Firebat and Rain and I were on the same side of the group. Oh, let's take a look at the actual recap. This looks recap. brutal. Yeah. Those, those, you know, marks over the nicknames, those, those look really brutal. Yeah. Too bad, too bad. I mean, we have 14 players and six were eliminated today. It's uh, interesting that, look at this. Yeah. Faramir being uh, crushed by the competition. Orange, too. It's like two, right. two people that were actually favored to go out of right. the groups, right? I think Solsa should be a third player there. Are not a lot of people are expecting Crowbat to go through, but right. uh, he's been yeah proving them wrong. Yeah, well, that warrior deck, it's... it's I would say it's, yeah. tr it's trash. But, <laughs> <laughs> but apparently it's working, yeah. yeah. I uh, we'll have to <laughs> see in, in, in the top eight, right? Because I think, they like, yeah. looking, yeah. At the same decks. looking at the Grim Patron Warrior, like, every pro player I talked to initially thought it was trash, but then, like, mm -hmm. 10 games in, it's like, ah, oh, it's... it's well, Pretty the good. Green it's Patron not, is not underestimated so, so much. Mm -hmm. right. I really love the card. Yeah. It's a good deck, man. I was, t I was telling your teammate Tice, and he ended up winning a game with it later on. So maybe you can explore a little bit more for the Nylon boys. Well, guys, that's been a really fun day so far. Uh, let's take a look at the bracket to finish out the day to see what we can expect for Manana. We have Firebat versus Airbrushed to start off the top end of the bracket. Then we have Raynad versus IB Dutch Boy. LB. LB Dutch Boy. Apologies. Yeah. Then we have RDU versus Koba. And then Powder versus Life Coach. That bottom half of the bracket looks pretty crazy. Crazy to me. Although realistically, it's just a good mixture of players. A lot of them have been invited. A lot of them have been. Uh, a few of them have qualifiers. But I think overall, it's a good mixture of. I haven't heard of these guys yet, and as well as the guys who've been around for a while. That's true.
Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think it's, it's five invites and then uh, three qualified players making it through. I think the match to watch here will be uh, Airbird versus Firebird. I think that'll be an excellent one coming up, uh, probably the first match. I think, I think Poto versus Lifecoat will be amazing too. Yeah, that I one as so. well, yeah. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So I think uh, tomorrow we're going to be starting around the same exact time, 12 p.m. Pacific here in London, UK. We're done for day number one. Thank you so much for everybody watching. A big shout out to the Gfinity production crew. Make sure you hit the follow button on the Twitch channel. From Lothar, Caldi, Frodi, and everyone else here in London, have a good night, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.